You know, in the mythical kitchen, we're always moving fast and trying to dream up the next big thing around here. You know, I've played so many goofy characters on this channel and uh, we still haven't organized the costume closet. It's just like a bunch of empty hangers and wigs that are tangled together and uh, a lot of them are gray. <laughs> so to understand why there's so much gray wig hair, is that head hair? I mean, don't worry about it. We're <laughs> flipping back the old YouTube scrapbook and rewatching some Meals of History. Yeah. This is the show where we go back in time, because why, Emily? Hold on, we've done this so many times, I should know this line. She's so great at remembering um, it. Wait, 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 wait! We gotta, don't cut! This is, this is real stuff, Don't people. you dare cut this camera. This is real stuff. All right, hang on. To understand the food of our present, we must first understand the foods of our past. Let's go. She gets it the first time every try, except for sometimes it's the third or the ninth try. Yes. Anyways, enjoy this marathon of Meals of History, and uh, we'll work on getting some more episodes out to you soon. Yeah. All right, so everyone knows the Titanic was a giant ocean liner that carried some of the world's wealthiest individuals. It set sail in 1912, it crashed into an iceberg and led to the deaths of 1,500 people. Yeah, but what many people don't know is that it also carried hundreds of immigrants from different class backgrounds from all over Europe, so there are tons of food stories to tell. Speaking of which, Emily, since you are the passenger and I am the chef, I think you should be the one to choose what you're eating. So right here we have the menus. We got first class, second class, and third class. I mean, are you really gonna make me choose between cabin biscuits and filet mignon and foie gras? I mean, I'm gonna need an evening gown and I'm gonna change my name. We're about to get fancy. All right, let's get cooking. Oh, hello, sexy peasant. <laughs> Thank you for calling me sexy. Who uh, who do we have here? My name is Madame Hulemerie. Madame Hulemerie, well, well, welcome. Thank you. I'm on my way to the place where we shuffle diamonds around on a wooden floor. Do you know where that is, good sir? I, I think that might be in the in the in the first deck, but right now you're actually in the kitchen. Ooh, no. <laughs> well, now that you're here, would you like to help out? Because we're actually making your dinner right now. I don't mind learning new things, so I guess. Well, Help. You seem very excited about it. So right now we are making what are called pommes anna, which is part of the dish filet mignon lily. This was invented by chef Adolphe Dugleret in the mid 19th century at Café Anglais in Paris. It was named after a French grand cocotte named Anna de Lyon. This was her signature dish that she would entertain the aristocracy with. You seem to like that. You know a lot of words. <laughs> so can you go ahead and peel this potato for me? No. You have a lot of safety hazards, frankly, for a kitchen. Mm. Um, what with the gloves, those are gonna go up in flames immediately. So I can just do this if you'd like. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't really have to help. You can just stand there and that do silly accents. Good. Also, yeah. what kind of animals around your neck? This is faux. And it also says, make an entrance. <laughs> You certainly made I an entrance. <laughs> so this dish, the pomana, it is a very classical French dish. It's actually a thing that a lot of people learn in culinary school, which obviously I did not go to. And then what you do is you brush a pan down in butter, and then you layer the potatoes, and you continue brushing it with butter, salt, and pepper until you're creating this kind of potato cake. You know, this is like the moment where I'd expect for us to take these and then make them into a potato chip version of whatever the Titanic Normally. served. No, we're going like pretty classical on this. I think the foods of history are really fascinating, right? Like it tells you all about the culture of the times. Right. Like the, the pores, that's what I call the steerage class, just the pores on the Titanic. They did not actually get a formal supper. I didn't realize that supper was known as a very kind of bourgeois thing. They ate like a fat breakfast just full of like oatmeal and milk and fish. Yeah, and you get to do Irish step dancing in the basement. Did I've you? only watched the movie. I don't know anything <laughs> else. <laughs> I've never seen the movie. You've never seen the movie? No, I'm straight doing this without ever having seen the movie, so I'm only going off of actual historical references and mostly from the food world. I want to throw salt in there like it's the heart of the ocean into the ocean. Do it, I don't know the reference because I've never seen okay, the movie. So you can teach me about the movie through cooking this I'm gonna out. approach it like she did in the movie, like to the precipice of the boat. Woo! There was a lot in one spot. I think I'd probably be put to death if the aristocracy was not pleased with my pomana. <laughs> I can't imagine that the cooks on the Titanic were treated very well. Right now we think of, you know, chefing as, or at least I'd like to think as a somewhat respected profession, but like, you know, back in, you know, the early 1900s, it like certainly wasn't. I mean, it very much was you were the help. Mm -hmm. There was like this sort of rise of this like haute cuisine in France, mostly perpetrated by a chef named Auguste Escoffier, 
wrote a guide to modern cookery, and so much of what we know about cooking today is still from that Escoffier tradition, and a lot of the dishes served on the Titanic were like his original dishes. Oh. So we're cooking this over somewhat low heat in the butter, mm -hmm. and then we're just gonna continue basting the butter. Almost all the food was basted in butter, so all these aristocrats on the Titanic were probably just farting constantly from all the dairy and fat. It feels like a boring existence on the Titanic, to be perfectly honest. Like, I don't know. I... Even for the rich people, like, what, do you just walk around? In the movie, they go to church. <laughs> You shouldn't have to go to church when you're on a cruise. I agree with that. I mean, do you have a lot of cruise experience yourself? Nope, never been on one. Never been on but a cruise. But if I'm Emily, on you one... would thrive on cruises. I mean, Marie, yeah, you would thrive on modern cruises. <laughs> yeah. A carnival cruise I line? Mean, the, the... Guy Fieri has a restaurant on all of the boats. Oh my God, I think she would hate that. Um... <laughs> so these potatoes have been cooking away. We're trying to get a nice hard sear on the bottom. You see they are jiggling, which means they're not sticking to the pan. So that means we're getting some caramelization. Okay. And now I'm actually gonna take these and I'm just gonna throw them in the oven to try and crisp up You can put top. that whole pan in an oven? You can put the whole pan in the oven, yeah, yeah. Modern technology, crazy, right? Oh man, I wouldn't put a pan in the oven. <laughs> that seems dangerous for me. Can I do something that's a reference to the movie, but it's also uh, a longingness for this food? Yeah, I think you can do that. Okay, it's in the top one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. I know the reference That's too. the only thing I planned <laughs> before coming here today. All right, the, I'm just gonna call you Madame from now on. Madame, we are making what is essentially a demi glace. So we have our roasted veal stock right here, and then that is going to be fortified with different liqueurs. So we have cognac right here, we have Cabernet, and then we have Madeira, which is a fortified wine that was made, but in the Portuguese tradition off of the African coast in the Madeira Islands, it was very popular. I was gonna suggest a tasting spoon for that, but you, you seem to... How's that for you? It will suffice. It will suffice. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. I'm here to please you. I am just the help as we have decided. So we're gonna start by sauteing our shallots in butter in the pan. So this is just to get all the flavors sort of incorporated. So we're also gonna be throwing in the bay leaf and the rosemary. And this is just a very rich sauce made with veal bones and three different liquors and a little bit of tomato paste, fresh herbs, and a whole lot of bones. A lot of bones. A lot of bones. Lot of rich people love eating bones. That's what we've noticed from the past. What's this thing? That... Oh, so this is called a chinois. Chinois? A chinois, yeah. It's meant for straining the sauce, so we're pushing through all those aromatics. Do I look like one of your French girls, Jack? Yes, all Jack, my- Jack, will you draw me like one of your French girls? All my French girls have conical breasts. All right, so now we have that tomato paste sort of reduced down. It's all nice and concentrated, so we're gonna add all of our liquors. So again, this is just a three liquor blend. This is gonna smell so good. The Cabernet, and we wanna cook this down for just a little bit. What's that, that one again, cognac? Uh, so that's cognac, this is Madeira. This is that fortified Portuguese wine. Madeira was a huge import, even to like the American colonies in the 1700s. Uh -huh. It was one of the most popular wines back in the day, and it was a relatively new invention at the time after Portugal sort of colonized the African coast. All right, so we're just gonna season this up a little bit with salt. There we go. I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds just to kind of get that raw liquor taste out of it, but concentrate all that complexity. How many torrid affairs have you had with that? Ugh. So I imagine that was common. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about that. <laughs> I was once betrothed to a baron, not of oil, but of something else. <laughs> what was he a baron of? I cannot say. Secret baron. Drugs. <laughs> He was unfortunately <laughs> murdered, so we could not go on with our nuptials, but we definitely did it a lot. You had an affair with a drug baron who was murdered. Well, it, it was before I was, he, I was supposed to bury him, so it was like, we are gonna do it anyway. I, I see, I see. You know, you, it, it's, it's, we are gonna do it anyway, so it was fine. I feel like back then there were a lot of rules, but they were broken constantly. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And contraception was a lemon peel. It works 13% of the time. <laughs> That's better than 0%, certainly. Exactly what I'm saying! So I'm gonna go ahead and strain the sauce off. How was this mysterious drug baron murdered? Poison. <laughs> was it from his own drugs? Maybe. I don't want to say anything that might get me into trouble. Well, no one will believe you, you anyway, <laughs> 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 I'll just ask, did you kill him? All right, so now I'm gonna take the sauce and I'm just going to pour it in and we're gonna reduce this down by a fair amount and then we're just gonna add butter to mount it. There's a French term called vermonté, which is a way to richen sauces up by adding butter at the very end. We'd call that mounting. They were really into French stuff. French culture, so much of it was kind of codified under Louis XIV, uh. right? Where they codified ballet, they codified music, they codified a lot of cooking. Uh, of course, you're familiar with the French mother sauces. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sauce l'espagnol, sauce tomate, sauce bechamel, sauce hollandaise. Yeah. Hollandaise. So, so, um, yo, she's very familiar, of I course. I know them all. Now there's only one more step, and that is to add this bermonte, or mount the sauce. 
So now you can see the butter is just going to melt and sort of emulsify into that and give it a lot of thickness and richness. So now we're ready to actually get to searing off our filet mignon. What? No! Oh. <laughs> All right, Madam Claire, who definitely did not murder her husband, we're gonna go ahead and tourne some artichokes. You're a funny poor. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna rip the outer layers of this artichoke off, and then we're trying just to get to the heart. Again, so much of this cooking was about excess and discarding lots of edible product to get to just the best tasting parts of that Ooh. product. All right, so... I don't think food waste would ever be a problem. <laughs> no, I ever. that shouldn't ever come back to haunt us no. at all. No, no, no. no. What is your relationship to the government? Like, do you bribe officials? I feel like that would be a big part of your life. Oh, no. I I just marry men who bribe officials. Oh, okay, okay. And then I kill them. All right, so we want to get it down to this sort of conical shape right here, and then I'm just gonna trim off the tops with my very sharp knife. Do you feel like artichokes feel pain? No, I don't think artichokes feel pain. I think uh, poor people do, which you seem to have some- Oh, no! <laughs> oh, people feelings. <laughs> You are a funny poor. That, yeah, yeah, that, that amuses you. <laughs> All right, so now it's gonna trim off the stem. And then I'm just gonna use the paring knife to sort of whittle around the outside. Makes me nervous. All the knives were incredibly dull back then. They weren't allowed to have sharp things in the Titanic. There was a problem with rich people murdering the less rich. Mm, yes, Who could have well. perpetrated that? Uh, well, sometimes you just have to clean up a mess. <laughs> <laughs> now we got this artichoke whittled down to just the stem. Typically you're supposed to take some lemon, you just kind of rub it on it just to sort of stop it from oxidizing. Mm -hmm. Then we're just gonna toss that in there and then we're just gonna blanch these artichokes and then we're gonna cut that in half and then we are going to get that kind of basted in steak fat. Blanche. Blanche. That should be her name. That's that's her name. Yes. Madame Blanche. Yes. Where is Madame Blanche from? She sounds like she's from Downton Abbey, wherever the hell that's from. All right, so now we need to stay this place. So we're gonna get some butter sort of browning in a pan. Most people wouldn't necessarily sear a steak and butter because it is going to brown, but we are doing it today. That pan is incredibly So hot. they have a ton of butter and everything, but ton of butter and all everything. these women had like waists that were 18 oh, inches. Oh, they were just cinched. There was a diet uh, in the 1800s where Mark Twain was a part of it. He believed you should chew all your food like 45 times. I'm just gonna go ahead and sear that filet off right there. And like you would chew your food 45 times, that way it stacked more evenly and digested quicker. That's then, probably a good idea, chewing it more. I don't really do that. No, I kinda I, hoof it. I like, eat like a duck. <laughs> Can you give me that ice bath? Oh dear. I hate cold water. Can you imagine being up to the neck? Oh, that would be horrible. That would be horrible. I can't physically imagine what that would feel like. I'm just gonna let that hang out and then we're eventually gonna get that Warm. into the filet. Right now, we just want to wait for this to sear for about three minutes, then we're gonna turn it, and then we're actually going to baste it in garlic and rosemary butter. All right, so we have all that butter melting, and so we're just gonna add the garlic and the rosemary in there. Do you wanna spoon it? Yes! Here, we'll flip around. I'll tilt the pan for you. Okay, what you so where do, do I do it? Just all over the top? Yeah, you're gonna tilt the pan. Yeah, there you go. So get all that brown butter just basting on that rosemary. Oh man, that's fun. So this is gonna go on top of those pum ana that we made earlier. That's going to get sauce. It's gonna get hit with the blanched artichokes that we're actually going to cook into some of that beef fat as well. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of green beans as supposed to stave off death and colon cancer, which may have been a problem back then, but was Wait, not Wait, just diagnosed. death in general? Well, yeah, I feel like people back then, like they weren't eating a lot of fresh vegetables, you know? So they had green beans to stave off death. I think so. Well, that worked great. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this filet, and I'm just gonna pop it in the oven just for a couple minutes just to finish it. So we have our pom ana down on the plate. We just cut that out with a ring mold, and now I'm going to take our filet and just place that top. And now I'm just going to take some of those roasted artichokes, give them a nice home to live in. Oh, I like the way you said that. Yes, just a lovely because little Because so artichoke. many people don't have a home to live in, and they deserve it. I'm just going to take a few green beans, place those on the outside. All right, so now I'm actually going to take the sauce I'm going to give it drizzle on the outside of the plate. I should have said this earlier, but you have a little bit of peanut butter in the corner of your mouth. <laughs> I do, I was eating a lot of peanut butter before this. I have, I'm a bad assistant. No, you're doing great. I mean, you're not typically asked to work very much, so. That's true for both the people <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> so you're gonna take this ring mold and you're just gonna punch out a nice coin of that duck liver. Palm heel strike. Oh! Here we go. And now it's gonna sort of Unmold this on the outside. Ooh, that little sticky noise. Here, try some of that. I don't know if you want to... I don't know. I've never had it before. Is it good? It's really good, yeah. It's better if you kind of mush it between your hands first. That's a way to sort of warm up the duck fat and release it. Yes. Oh, it is really good. I'm sort of just going to punch a little <gasps> liver coin right on top. <laughs> Emily, this is the filet mignon, Lily. This is the classiest dish that you could have ordered in the first class cabin of the Titanic. Are you ready to eat it? I have a couple other first class surprises for you as well. For me? Just for you. Oh. 
I'm excited. I actually have a table waiting for you in the first class dining cabin. Well. Après vous, madame. Is she French? I don't know. Blanche, uh, here we are at your first class table. Thank you so much for inviting me into your world. So please tell me what we have here. We're going to start out with peaches and clotted cream. Gelatin was a common dessert in your era. Yes. So this is actually a yes. French liqueur that is gelatinized and served with Mm. How are you feeling about the chartreuse jelly? It's very good. I'm getting a lot of that liquor taste. Yeah, it tastes like absinthe. <laughs> yes. Which my husband sold. <laughs> I can imagine that he did. Where are we moving next? So now it's the caviar. It's the fanciest of things. But of course. And we have egg bits in yellow and white. And then we have a mayonnaise. And um, those are red onions. I don't eat those. No, that's that's not uh, fancy not. enough for you. So what do you do? Oh, Don't I'm so sorry. I thought you were supposed to touch with your fingers. You have to wait till I tell you that I that's apologize. the right thing. I apologize. So you pick that up. Thank you, thank you. And then you put some of that and then whatever you want on it. And then that's how you eat it. Are you a big fan of caviar? Yes. I have no children of my own, but I will consume this fish's children. I'll cheers to that. Yes. You probably are very familiar with soup. Yes, yeah, it, is, it is a food of the common people. Yes. So that is soup with vegetables in it. It's just a broth to kind of cleanse the palate before you have more of the main course. Okay. Well, here, grab a spoonful. That is a very delicate cleansing flavor. So this is actually consomme olga, which is made with a stock of sturgeon bones. Sturgeon? Mm -hmm. What is that? It is a very large fish, very expensive. Ooh, That's where a lot of caviar like comes it. from. I like it. And now we have the oysters, which are an aphrodisiac. I like to save those for after supper. Uh, you don't eat them now? No, because later on tonight, I'm going to have to see my husband. He's a very ugly man. Godspeed, I'll save mine for after dinner too. That is disgusting. Oh, and lastly, the filet mignon. Filet mignon lily, I believe. Yes. Would you cut that for me, good sir? I absolutely, I would insist. Thank a lady you. must never cut her own steak. My husband usually puts them in very small bites and feet. I'm surprised Jimmy. your husband sees you at all. It sounds like you don't have the greatest relationship. No, we have a great relationship. He's just very ugly. It sounds like his money is mostly what you're after. Well, that's what I was going to say. That's actually what matters, but we have fun. What do you do for fun? Throw rocks at peasants. <laughs> that is a very large bite. My husband would never let me have this. I'm stealing your fork. <laughs> you very wild. Cheers. Cheers to the greatest voyage of our time. Oh, with lights. Okay. There's so much flavor in there. That's something. You want a green bean? Yeah, give me a green bean. I'll eat some duck liver with that green bean, though. Oh, yeah. I want a piece of that with the green bean. Mmm. I see what the appeal was behind this food, right? It's antiquated, it's French, but boy, is it fancy and decadent, and I'm into it. Me too. I think I'd die on a ship for this. Who's dying? What do those lights keep doing? I don't know. That steak is really freaking great, though. I mean, this is pretty cool. It's like going back in time and having a piece of history that was happy right before it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it totally is. It shows you, like, the class and the taste of the people at the time. I wonder if they let you have little doggy bags. I think the purse was probably the method. So, M Madame Blanche, if I oh. may call you that. Yeah, hang on. Does this... Yes! <laughs> does this satisfy your expectations as an aristocratic first-class passenger on the Titanic? Well, yes, I think this suffices. That is literally the nicest thing Blanche has said to me all day, so thank you. And normally I would thank you for joining me, but thank you for allowing me to join you on your last meal. It has truly been an incredible experience. What do you mean my last meal? Maybe my <laughs> last meal with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, about that. We are traveling back in time to 1955. That is the first year that Disneyland opened. And Walt Disney, who pretty much like invented the modern theme park, thought that food should be just as much an attraction as all the rides. Oh, cool. It's also like the only place I can walk around with a giant turkey leg and not be bothered about it. Yeah, I like all the phallic foods at Disneyland. I only eat turkey legs and I also don't know what phalluses look like. No kidding, I was about to say, dang, Josh. They had all these restaurants that were like, themed after things. If you look at this map right here, this breaks down all the restaurants. Whoa. They were all attached to brands, weirdly. So you had like the Carnation Dairy Hut, and they were all themed around things. So you had like the pirate-themed Chicken of the Sea tuna restaurant. Ooh. You had Casa de Fritos, a Mexican restaurant. We're gonna be making two dishes from there. But they also had like, you know, this Golden Horseshoe it was like this big steak and chop house to like reference the California Gold Rush. Nice. So it was actually really cool, and there's a lot of history going on inside Disneyland and a lot of food history itself. Oh, cool. Look, there's that thing that Jeff Bezos did. Yeah, Jeff Bezos was actually 
absolutely thing. there. He was there. Yeah, yeah, he was the lizard person buried underneath Disneyland that would come out at night to eat the cats. He's a lizard Highlander. All right, Emily, you ready to get to it? Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I'm excited, you're gonna dress up, I'm gonna cook? Yeah, I'm very, I'm, I'm very excited. Just like old times. It's good to be back. And here she is, Miss America. Who time for my bath? No, no, no. Time please, for my bath. Miss, no, Miss, please, I don't know. Time I'm not, for my I'm bath. I'm not here to bathe you. Ma'am, can you help me make the food from the opening menu oh. at Disneyland? Do you know anything about that? Did you know I used to work as Snow White in Disneyland? You seem like you still do. You got the whole getup on. That's very nice of you. Try to keep this up. <laughs> You've just, how long have you been wearing this? It smells wearing awful. What? <laughs> I don't. I don't know, they put it on me. Are you part of like an unethical conservatorship? What is wrong? No, I'm a, I live at Cedar Pines. <laughs> yeah. In Reno. I do love Reno. These people came and they put me in a van. I'm glad that you got in the van because right now we are making my favorite item from the opening menu at Disneyland. This is from the Chicken of the Sea restaurant. It was an entire tuna Wait, themed restaurant. I used to work at Disneyland. <laughs> yes, I know, I know Blanche, I'm assuming your name is. No, it's Judith I Bats. <laughs> Sorry, Judith. I'm gonna open this can of Listen, I'm <laughs> remembering something. I worked at the park. I was Snow White. I was one of the first ones. That, and that was one of Disney's biggest movies that like opened the park, right? It was an important movie. I relate to it very much. In what way? My parents are dead and I love apples. That's great. I like living in a, in a, in a small shack with seven people. This LA is... living, am I right? Got him. All right, so, so this is from the Chicken of the Sea restaurant. And they we are using Chicken, chicken of, of the Sea they restaurant. Had a, if you ever think that we sell out to brands, Walt Disney in the opening Disneyland like restaurants, he sold every single restaurant to a major food brand. And the most insane one to me was the Chicken of the Sea pirate ship restaurant. It was shaped like a pirate ship, opened in 1955. God, that's so gross. This and, is like my least favorite. Uh, uh, Why is it so uh, pink? This is the cheapest tuna we could find. Oh God. So we're making a hot tuna pot. You're making a hot tuna oh, I'm pie. covered in tuna juice. Do you want, can I just? No! I'm sorry. <laughs> Start dumping everything into the tuna. So they made a everything? hot tuna pie. They also, the Chicken Sea restaurant, they had tuna burgers. They had something called a dietetic tuna salad, which for me is the funniest thing frozen in history. What is dietetic? Just like, it's the old school term for like a, like nu like nutritionists. They were just like dietitians. They practice dietetics. That sounds like Scientology. It sounds like a prequel to Dianetics. Okay, exactly. Um, okay, so. so there was no oh actual God. recipe for the hot tuna pie. We could not find a real recipe. What you're gonna wanna do is put the Did entire you lose can the metal lid in there. In there? So we're putting a whole can of cream mushroom soup, because this is 1955, right? This is like space age food. This is like people were so excited at the prospect. Just throw it wherever. People were so excited by like, you know, the new technology of canning. It was supposed to like release women from the shackles of domesticity that they didn't have to cook all the time. Boy, what a novel um, idea of how to do that. Yeah, yeah right? Just can, just gelatin and mayonnaise. <laughs> gelatin so we're mayonnaise. adding like canned peas in there. We got canned tuna, we got canned cream mushroom soup. We're adding a little bit of flour. Can you unwrap this dough? Ooh. Just start rolling it out a little bit. This is cute. Yeah, this it smells like cat food. Yeah, definitely. But definitely. we're gonna make it hot. We're gonna make it real hot. We're gonna wrap it in pastry what? dough. Oh, also smell this. We just got no, old eggs. Oh, it's just old eggs. I don't were, mind. They put chopped hard boiled egg in everything at the chicken in the sea restaurant. They did. They also had everything was deviled. Everything was deviled. Deviled everything. ham, deviled eggs. I love the deviled is just like we mixed it with mayonnaise and then shoved a little bit of paprika in there. Or it's like gelatin. But I guess that what was with all the gelatin? Well, it was just like a new technology. Technology. That was just like for funsies. There was but like, was holy not. crap, we can. Lincoln had that gelatin thing that we made. You should totally watch that. That's video true, but that was like natural gelatin. So this is packaged gelatin because they used to have to actually like boil down bones to make gelatin, but now they sold little gelatin packets. That's why there's gelatin and mayonnaise and bananas and everything in the 50s because like tropical fruits were new because the US was just like out, you know, colonizing every island they could find at this time and annexing Hawaii and Puerto Rico and all this. And so there were just all these like tropical fruits that people didn't have access to. So that's why there's like bananas wrapped in ham covered in mayonnaise because they were just excited about it. Are you gonna tell me what to do with this? Oh, can you like roll it out a little bit? Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> just like drop a little flour there, put that out, start rolling it. So the gelatin became boxed instead of grinding bones. I guess yeah, that yeah. was to make women free. That was well. to free the women. To did, free did the it, women. Did it, as, as a woman, did it work? Uh, yeah, no. Although when I eat <laughs> boxed gelatin, I feel free. You never free. feel more free. I feel free. All the like herbal essences shampoo commercials should have just been from boxed gelatin. Man, just I miss lady. those commercials. Yellow in a salad in a, in a shower. That's People aren't say. allowed to get horny for shampoo anymore. You can't get horny for jello though. I'll tell you that. It's, it's just 
just a shame. I'm horny for Jello. I'm horny for shampoo that smells like that. Speaking of smells, Disneyland must have had some great smells back in the day. There is a distinct theme park smell yeah. that is like hot butt crack, like wet mm -hmm. butt. That's the people from Florida. No, it's just like you oh. sit on those water slides in jorts. Yeah. Or in your like, you know. Lord knows I'm there. Here, you stir the tuna. Thanks. I'm gonna take the dough. Is anything worse looking than this? Uh, no. Try it. Try a bite though. You should just eat some. Absolutely not. Why not? Because I. This just is the low carb dietetic. This is like, uh, <laughs> you know, they they just had like the wine and cigarette diets back then. This is like that. I'm the not tuna. familiar with that. <laughs> um, just like you know, I just don't do stuff I don't want to do. But I feel That's like a, you know, working at Disneyland from the inception, you, you kind of had to do a lot. You of had things to, you didn't do. but once you get past a certain age, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. What's that certain age that you have to Other get Other than get old and die. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. What? <laughs> at what age do they, like, retire Disney princesses? Because, like, what was what was your job at the no, park? No, no, they're just, still like, there. But, like, do they, I mean, like, is that a job that you can, you know, work 40 oh, years retire. and retire in? When did I retire is what you're asking. Yes. Well, when I was 20 years old, I played Snow White in 1955. How much money did you make? Money. <laughs> Oh, they did not. Labor laws were tough back then, I suppose. I was paid in a handful of tuna casserole. <laughs> they said, good work. You got just like tuna war rations. I got a, no, you put it in your purse, you saved it for later. <laughs> when I reached old age at 25. Oh no, I am They made so sorry. me the queen, I was the queen, the evil queen. And then, yeah, a spinster, I suppose they would have called yes, you in those terms. Yes. Yeah. I got to be the one after the transformation. Yeah. I had fought for the other one and they were like, mm -hmm, maybe not for you. Sounds like you didn't have a lot of sort of power in your role. So children thought I was a witch. Yeah. I had a house that was black. It had a black roof. <laughs> and black windows. What was that? Was just an aesthetic choice for you? It you had just... black uh, walls. Do you know what color the, the bricks were? Uh, what color were they? They were black. You had black you bricks. idiot. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't want to assume. I thought I'm you were gonna- sitting here trying to connect with you and you just won't. I don't know that we have much in common. I'm so sorry. I just don't, this isn't like, I'm not really hitting it off. You seem incredibly depressed and confused. I'm not depressed. I just have a lot of ailments. <laughs> From all the canned tuna, is it? I mean, all the lead-based paint sweetheart, that they have. Sweetheart, sweetheart, it's called mortality. I don't know. Do you think you're gonna live forever? No, just I just. Because the way your arms look. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm very, I'm very flattered. Uh, I'm not interested, but I'm flattered. <laughs> I. That's looking great. Yeah, you wanna just like fill, fill these up. Oh God, people everyone just- Everyone's just smelling like log ride jorts and So tuna. was this in a restaurant or did people like walk around with these? I assume people did walk around them because they were serving mostly handheld foods. They also had a commemorative tuna salad that was served in a boat. Commemorative! You were supposed, literally, so the way that you take like commemorative, you know, drink cups home, they had a commemorative tuna salad boat that you were supposed to just eat wet tuna out of and then walk around with this wet tuna boat throughout the- God. And everyone wore like suits to Disneyland back in the day. So they're just sweating through wool with just tuna in their knapsack. Yeah. I want, that's the era of Disneyland that I want to go to. I bet the lines were a little easier though. The lines were definitely easier. But there was probably not very many rides. They had like mules through Frontierland where you could just go ride a mule and that was the ride. Again, wow. that's the Disneyland that I want. I gotta we gotta be open honest. up our own janky park where it's just like, uh, oh. we painted a mule like a zebra. Do you want to ride it? Have you seen, you gotta go, go on the internet. <laughs> children <laughs> and look up theme park in the Netherlands. Oh, what? what is it? Terrifying. I don't know. It's just like, you know, animatronics are just terrifying. I love animatronics. I know someone that's definitely afraid of animatronics. I love them. I am terrified of them, no, especially no, no, no. the ones in the water. There's a name for it. I don't remember it. There's the a phobia. Anima like, like if you're underwater and then you just happen to see like a dragon's head. Yeah, I'm fine with you'd that. You'd be, I'd die. No, I no, no, die. no, I'm fine with that. I like the animatronics because I can control them. What it's if not like the Boston Dynamics robots where I'm incredibly afraid. I'm not it's afraid not of cute when they dance. I'm not afraid of those. They fall over for no reason. They are then not Then they're like good. back flipping over obstacles. Yeah, while we're making fun of Jeff Bezos for wasting money, let's make fun of Boston Dynamics too. <laughs> if I see any robot delivering food, I'm kicking it into the street. Yeah. I don't care uh -huh. yeah. what you order. I agree. I don't care if you have it, like if you're had a hard day at work, I'm kicking it in the street. And I'm taking your little Caesar's crazy bread. Yes, it's like, it's just asking for it. It's begging to be messed with, right? right I'm gonna cut a little vent hole. We got these hot tuna pies ready to go. We got all the creamy mushroom soup. We got all the cheese in there. And then I'm gonna pop these in the oven. Uh, and then we can eat our hot tuna pies. Okay, that sounds good. 
Judy, how's your arthritis doing today? Oh, okay, are we doing it on a scale of the frowny face all the way to the yeah. happy face? It's the one in the middle that's like, why won't I die? God, you sound like my grandma, except she's Jewish, so she's Would just... you like a candy? Uh, yeah, kinda, actually. I never... Oh, God, you actually have it. How old is this? This isn't supposed to be a hard candy. This is a soft candy that's turned hard in your purse. Well, it was my grandmother's candy. She had this watermelon candy in her <laughs> no. house. And then, it's not the, it's not her, yeah, I, I plucked it from her dead hands at the funeral, Josh. No, I bought it online, and they still make it, and it's good, so you're welcome. Thank you so much. Can, can you pour that water into the mossy okay. here? So right now, we are making what was called a taco in a ta cup. That is a portmanteau of taco and cup. This is at the Casa de Fritos restaurant in Frontierland. Uh, it was literally, again, Walt Disney sold every single restaurant at Disneyland to a major food manufacturer, and Fritos at the time was about a 23-year-old company. It was founded by C.E. Doolin in 1932, and so they had all- <laughs> Doolin. <laughs> you like that one? It's a funny name. Ellie, can you put the water in the boss and mix it up? I'm gonna make the beef. Wait. I'm waiting. I have to put I'm gonna cook. You purse. do what you're gonna do. I'm gonna cook. I'm, I'm getting my beef working. So we're making uh, what Disneyland sort of thought water Mexican food was in 1955. Water Pour it in that and then mix it aggressively with the pork. So right now, this is just water, it's masa. <laughs> oh God, you're getting oil in the bottom no! of the car. You said aggressively. All right, so this is like, uh, a lot of people will credit Casa de Fritos at Disneyland for kind of inventing the taco salad. It was called a taco and a taco. -up. There's an actual original mold for the talk cup design in like the Smithsonian Museum. I, I did a bad job. Just mash it, mash it with your hands. Go in with your hands. Here, roll okay. up your sleeves. I won't, I won't, I'm not gonna bathe you, but I'm gonna roll up your sleeves. <laughs> Don't do. The wrists are the worst part. Is it raining? Are you one of those, you can feel the weather in your bones? No, I just use my wrists a lot at my job. Doing what? Doing what? What do you use your wrists for? Are you sure you got retired from your job when you were 25 because of your age, I didn't or you were get just retired? I got demoted. To which? Did they cut your tuna rations in your purse when you got demoted? No, I still got the same tuna. It's very, they're well, very generous. Good for them. Equitable wages at early Disneyland. Yes, they, they fed us well. We got the beef sauteing. I've just seasoned it with salt and pepper because I assumed what Disneyland thought were Mexican spices in the 1950s wasn't exactly uh, uh, where we're at today. I'm also taking some very just kind of corn syrupy taco sauce. Taco sauce the history is really interesting. It's kind of before people uh, uh, in America, well, white people in America knew what salsa was. They kind of created a hybrid of ketchup and hot sauce and called it taco sauce. What am I doing? What? It's so hard sometimes to figure out what to do when you just talk about hey, hold on, hold on. <laughs> conspiracy theories for like 10 minutes and I just like touch things. Well, we're gonna add a little bit more water, get this masa a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, that's dry. Incredibly. There you go, Matt, now mash that aggressively. Yeah, there you go, there you go. I'm gonna stir this around. See, yeah, like I was saying. <laughs> Here we go, here we go. No, this is really cool because they, they would take the masa and they literally put it into tart shells and then they clamp the tart shells with like a stick thing what? and then they deep fried it. And so this, when you get like the big tostada salads from like the El Pollo Loco, that's like, this is the precursor to that. Which I think is really cool, but they actually didn't make their own taco shells in there. That was from a company called Alex Foods, now known as Don Miguel Foods. Uh -huh. And so like they were getting pretty much everything else except for this is the only thing that like Casa de Frito sort of invented for themselves. And then in like the 1970s, Doritos were invented because a salesman from Don Miguel Foods. It smells really good. It smells good, yes. Yeah. Three ingredients. <laughs> a sales rep literally came into Casa de Frito, saw they were throwing away old tortillas, mm -hmm. and they were like, you can just fry those up and just put some seasonings on them. And that was the origin of Doritos. Oh, wow. Which is crazy. So yeah, without Casa de Fritos and Frontierland at Disney, you wouldn't have Doritos and you would never have the Ta Cup. Hell yeah. An enduring name that everybody remembers. This kind of looks like what Ted Kennedy got that girl out of the car in the bottom of the pond with. Were you there? Maybe. <laughs> I'm gonna take some masa and I'm gonna pop it in the bottom of this here tart shell. What kind of oil are you using for this? I always ask oil questions You always now. ask, it's always the same you, oil. It's just like normal. Me, you complimented me that one time and now that's the only question I ask. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to talk about your various ailments in character. Oh, okay. What, well, we could talk about what I'm probably gonna get. How's your dental health? Oh, no. Are those your teeth? <laughs> Which of those teeth are yours? Oh, that's a tough question currently and in the character. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, we both talk about dental. Oh, no, I just got my first crown. Hey, Mazel, that's exciting. No, it's not. I mean, it's, it's just only downhill from here. <laughs> Sometimes I think about dentures and I'm like, It'd be nice. No, it wouldn't be nice, but it would at least be one less thing to worry about. I agree with that. I'm trying uh, to get dentures when I'm like 35. When you're 35? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just get it real early. Oh, you mean my age? Okay, okay. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
All right, our expertly spiced taco meat is done. Now here, wait, actually, sorry. So we're using both of these for the creation of one. So what they would do is they would mold all the Fritos masa dough into this tart shell. They would take another tart shell and pop it on top, and then we're gonna clamp it. I assume you want me to do this one. Because um, we're gonna clamp this that's and That's very intimidating in looking thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't even understand, but this is literally, you can see the picture of this. It's in a freaking museum, the oh, original Oh, actually, tool. I've had an exam with something similar. I've never done this before, but we're just gonna, don't, don't lean your face over. Don't lean oh, your face okay. over. Because if you get hit, it's like that lady with the McDonald's coffee. Like, you're done. Oh, you're yeah. destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, give it, give it like a solid 30 seconds. Give okay. it a solid 30 seconds. Don't lean over. Don't breathe. Just go smell the taco meat if you want. I'm gonna go. It smells nice. Go smell the taco meat? It smells like school lunch, the taco meat. They had a lot of cool stuff at Casa de Fritos. They, they served like tamales, they had combo plates. Yeah. And then they also had Frito pie, which is really cool. Ooh. Cause like chili, and Walt Disney's favorite food was chili. When he would travel to Europe, he would bring his own canned chili. The weirdest thing is that it wasn't one brand of canned chili. He would take one can of Denison's chili, mix it with a can of Hormel chili, like a master sommelier blending wine varietals. And that was Walt Disney's favorite meal. Do you know you said chili so many times that it reminded me of when an old lady goes into a tangent and just repeats the things she remembers? I had a, a silver serving tray <laughs> and a pewter serving tray and then a, a plastic serving tray. And then she'll start over it. Yeah, I'm yeah. leaving the silver Did one to my this? niece Bernice. <laughs> niece Bernice. <laughs> it's like a dentist named Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> they just start repeating the same things. All right, so we got that out. Now I'm just gonna there we go. Don't burn yourself. Wow. So now we got our little fried talk cup. That's so cute. Look at that. Aww. All right, so we're gonna do that a couple more times, then we're gonna fill it with the beef, and then we got a couple more uh, little Casa de Fritos accoutrements to pop in there. Okay, cool. All right, Judy. What? We gotta fill up our little talk cups here. So I'm gonna go with the hot stuff. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of beans first. That's a lot of beans first. I'm gonna a little bit of beans first. I'm gonna hit it with beef, then cheese, and you're gonna do the lettuce, sour cream, and tomatoes. Emily, the person inside the what? Judith. I, What's up? Do you like Disneyland? Like, do you go often? I do not. I'm more of a Disney World kind of girl. I hope that's okay. Oh. Cause it's like, I don't know. That's one I went to as a kid. But I, my uh, my papa. Of course you have a papa. I had a Mimi and a papa. And papa had uh, Crohn's disease. So then we kind of went to the front. That's the way to do it. Because he had the handicap. Find pack. yourself a papaw with Crohn's disease. You just hang out with your grandparents line. more. You that should too. just do it. Like, too. But um, yeah, no, he would get us to the front and then he wouldn't get on the ride. <laughs> I always thought I hated Disneyland, uh, and then I went there as an adult, and then I found out that if uh, there is a corresponding craft beer festival and you drink a couple of those corresponding craft beers, mm -hmm. then you have a really great time at Disneyland. I don't think I would do Disneyland sober. No, 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 but like as an adult going, you know, getting just like a little bit, a little bit shwasty, I got a, a Minnie Mouse uh, ears that I got uh, customized with my Hebrew name Yeshua on it. And now I wear that as a yarmulke. Oh, that's cute. Is that sacrilegious? I'm the wrong one to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, we've got our taco cups from Casa de Fritos in Frontierland. Oh, they're very cute. They're very cute. You want to put these in your purse? This is a Christmas bonus. If I had known we were going to do this bit, I would have gotten an uglier purse. You know, there's not a lot of distance from here to there. Can we just take them and eat them over there? Let's do it. And I got a couple other special things from Disneyland's opening menu that we're also going to eat. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you have any uh, uh, things that don't agree with your stomach? Probably, but I ignore them and just keep living. Judy, I hope this reminds you of your time at the park when it was open. We got our tuna pies, we got the talk ups, we have our little commemorative tuna boat salad. Oh, you can take that home for the grandkids. My payment. Yes, yes, there's your Christmas bonus. We also have the Matterhorn Sunday. It's from the Carnation restaurant. But then also, most of the food at Disneyland was just like ham sandwiches. So we got some of that, Ooh. a little bit of Frito pie. But first, nice. let's dig into these talk ups right here. Uh, cheers to your many years of service. Very nice to meet you. Don't make me go back to the place where I came from, please. <gasps> This is an absolute delight. This is gonna get stuck in the roof of my dentures, but it's worth it. I would love to just walk around Disneyland eating this. I'd love to eat this at a Super Bowl party. I would eat this literally anywhere. This is truly a fantastic food. Mm. Wash it down with your exotic fruit juice from Tahiti. Cause this is also a thing they had at Disneyland. They were obsessed with Tahiti. And so, cheers. cheers. Get some fruit juice with you. Strong. Wow, I haven't tasted real sugar in a very long time. <laughs> Let's dig into these tuna pies. I'm gonna take it out of the shell. You do smell the tuna through the crust. I can't smell much anymore. <laughs> Eat your tuna pie, that, that'll make the pain go away. Ooh, 
No. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty good. This tastes like a just out of the Great Depression food. This is really the good. The salty cream mushroom soup in the can. I they knew how to live back in the 1950s. A lot of bad stuff as well. Yeah. But man, the hot tuna pie, we can keep that. Throw a lot of the other cultural institutions away though. Yeah, there were a few things back then that probably weren't great. Uh, let's try some of this. So this is a tuna boat salad. Uh, tuna salad, but here you get to take a little commemorative boat home. Look at that. That's adorable. Isn't it? I'm not eating it cold. Mmm. Mm. That chicken of the sea. Do you know the Matterhorn Sunday though? Wow, this is beautiful. So this is from Carnation, the dairy company. They sponsored uh, this big uh, ice cream house. So they have this massive Matterhorn Sunday uh, that looks really freaking delicious. Mmm. What a lovely dessert, what a lovely meal. Uh, Judy, thank you so much for helping me recreate the foods of what seemed to be a very traumatic time in your life. I had a very good time. <laughs> I brought you a present. Also, oh. everyone should have more candy. There oh go. gosh, thank you, wow. You! Don't, no, we don't throw candy <laughs> at the children, we throw it to the children. Hang on. You. I can't That's throw. That's very sweet, Judy. That's I can't very, throw The kids very are good having a great time. Because of my arthritis. <laughs> This is a present for you. Oh. It's my favorite snack. Oh, thank you so much. Just uh, an inconspicuous apple, huh? Yes, I like to watch you eat it. Why? Everyone has their thing. There's. I hear that kink shaming isn't allowed anymore. Maybe you should take a cue from the children. Apple tastes a little funny. Yeah. It's kind of bitter. It's a special <coughs> apple. <coughs> Why do I feel so funny, miss? <coughs> oh no, that was for me. Lord, why won't you take me? Today we are blasting off to July 20th, 1969 nice. for an intergalactic moon meal enjoyed by astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins in the Apollo 11 mission that made the United States the first country to touch down on the moon. Now, do I think that the space race was a glorified pissing contest between the Soviet and American governments? Sure, but it's still really cool and the food seems really awesome. So are we gonna make like Dippin' Dots, you know, the ones that you get at the mall? Yeah. No, we are making the day five breakfast from the mission, which consisted of bacon squares, sugar cookie squares, pineapple peach drink, and freeze dried peaches. Though technically the first food eaten on the moon was Buzz Aldrin's communion wafers. However, this was the first full meal. Ah, oh, okay, cool. This sounds really, really good. Lots of cubes, lots of cubes. We got a lot of cubes, we got a lot of freeze drying, we got a lot of weird chemicals going on. All right, Emily, you know the drill by now. I'll make the food, you dress up as a, and she's already getting changed. I, I, I just assumed you were gonna be Neil Armstrong, but it was a Sally ride? No, I'm not Sally Ride. I am Valentina Tereshkova. But Sally Ride is the first woman in space. No, silly American. I was first woman. I was also first woman to do it in a solo trip in space. All by myself. I don't need you. You don't need no man. I don't need anyone. Well, do you need some space bacon? I, I, the Russian thing is throwing me, but I guess I'm excited to show you a big piece of American culture, what which is bacon. Is space bacon? So space bacon, I'm really glad you asked. I'm obviously no scientist. I didn't even graduate from college. I imagine you probably went to some sort of like Russian cosmonaut school. My God, do you always talk this fast? <laughs> yes. You talk, talk, talk. You say nothing. Say nothing at all. I don't he like says that. Bacon. I don't like that bacon. Emily is actually We're dragging me. We're making bacon. Me. We're making space bacon. Space bacon. Bacon is an American product. It's pork that has been cured with sugar and salt and then smoked. But then for <laughs> and salt. You have both in your country. You have both sugar and salt. <laughs> So what we're gonna do to try and mimic what you might do to make space food is we're gonna add sugar and salt to this ground pork because it's gonna be a lot leaner, so there's gonna be less fat to take up space because we needed the astronauts to actually have nutrient-rich food. So we're gonna get some lean pork in here. Nutrients. In Russia, you don't have nutrients. In Russia, nutrients has you. <laughs> You're gonna get to Yakov Smirnov eventually. I'm glad oh, it happened in the first two minutes. I'm gonna Yakov Smirnov all over this table. Please don't Yakov on my table. All right. I'm taking some of this ground pork and I'm gonna add a lot of salt to it because salt is a natural preservative, right? So we're gonna eventually freeze dry this food and then we're gonna vacuum seal it to try and get all bacteria out. Cause like this stuff had to last for a long time. And then I'm gonna add a ton of sugar to this because sugar is also a preservative. So citric acid is another citric preservative. Citric acid? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit sour. I feel like all the food up there is a little bit sour, citric acid, but then we got some other cool stuff. We got xanthan gum. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, xanthan gum. Is it from a gum tree with a kookaburra in it? I have no idea where xanthan gum comes from, but I do know that it is a huge uh, industrial thickening agent and binding agent. Okay. So the goal is to try and like really bind all of the starches and fats together so that there's no moisture like leaching out of this. This is all American space food, right? Like we had a bunch of like shrink wrap bacon bars. Everything was made into cubes. We're adding maltodextrin in there as well. What about Russian food? I'm not weak. I don't need food. Ah! We have tubes. Is you that how you tubes? say it with an accent? Tubes. We have tubes. Pink. Yeah, pink. Your food is pink tube? That's borscht. <laughs> is it actually a borscht tube? Sometimes. Sometimes it's little mouse you find. 
<laughs> All right, so I'm taking. Oh, it's uh, sometimes brown. Is the brown your favorite, I or think like it's, what? Yeah, I think I, I like the brown. Are you sure the brown isn't the waste tube? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm gonna add a little bit of what's called Ultra Text 3, which totally sounds like a robot that would be in space. Sounds like some Wally food, but this is just a modified food starch that does really well with swelling, which means that it's going to absorb a ton of moisture, and it'll also do it at a cold temperature, which I want this to get really kind of like thick and gummy right now. Mm -hmm. So that way, when we like blend it and bake it. Hopefully none of that fat. It smells out. like barbecue sauce in here. That's the liquid smoke. In the American space program, they wanted to remind the astronauts of home and stuff. That's why bacon was like a big part of it. It's such an American thing. But then now NASA doesn't have bacon in the space program anymore. They only have sausage and we haven't been into the moon in years. No, you have not. But really, you didn't even go to the moon. Oh no, oh you no, went, you're one you of them, huh? You went to a place where this man named Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. Stanley. You were referring to, to Stanley direct, Kubrick. <laughs> director Stanley Kubrick. Yes. You're saying the moon landing was fake. The man who made Shining, which is comedy in you... my country. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this, but this is looking pretty good. Hey, hey. this looks like pig tube. <laughs> So I'm gonna take some of this cooked bacon because I want that real bacon texture and flavor in there, but I want mm. it to be bound by the pork and I especially want this to become a solid cube. So we're just gonna massage the bacon in there. Valentina, do you wanna, you wanna start getting your hands dirty with some bacon? I feel like Russian women getting their hands dirty is that a is big true. thing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. How does that feel? It feels cold and yeah. satisfying. Doesn't it? All right, that's looking pretty good. Once that's worked in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're just gonna put it on a silicone mat and then we're gonna cook it. And then after we cook it, we gotta freeze dry it. Okay, I'm very excited because you keep saying freeze dry as if I know <laughs> what it means. I asked what it means. What freeze drying is, is a typical dehydration process. Like if you're doing it with beef jerky, you're using heat to get the moisture out, right? Uh -huh. With freeze drying, you're using cold to get moisture out. So you need to drop the food to such a low temperature that the water inside doesn't turn to ice, but it actually sublimes and turns to gas. Sublimes? <laughs> Are we gonna practice Santeria? <laughs> We're gonna be every just a-hole kid from my high school who wore that t-shirt. Yeah, it was a cool t-shirt though. It's a bummer. Cool. Yeah, well, it's a bummer now that- Now we know that Emily was that a-hole kid from my high school. I didn't have it. I had the many deaths of uh, Kenny. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I had that shirt too. I had like the Homer Simpson one with the Duff beer on it and then I got suspended. You got suspended for that? Uh, not suspended, like, like a detention. I got almost suspended for bringing a knife. <laughs> hey oh! But the thing is- Is this the Russian character or is this just the- No, it's just me. The Tennessee but character. But the thing is I told on myself because I, I had a camping trip and oh, then I realized I brought the knife in the backpack and then I went, I have a knife. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were like, you gotta go to the office now. And I was oh like, God. oh man. And then I went there, my dad came to pick me up and they were like, because she told us it'll be fine, but we're gonna have to melt your knife down. And my dad what? was like, what? And they were what? like, yeah, we gotta melt it down. My, and he's like, you got a knife melter? We've had the same textbooks since <laughs> 1965, but you got a knife melter. <laughs> okay. Emily, this explains so much about your origin story. But I didn't get suspended, <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> I'm gonna take this base bacon and I'm gonna put it in the oven until it's cooked and then we're gonna cut it into some cubes. I, we, we, uh, space bacon, we have it. Yep. It's here now, it's here, it is a solid brick. This is what you would call in measurement a pud. <laughs> you got a pud of space bacon you need in a there. a pud of space bacon. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna trim it into cubes because that is how it was served on the Apollo 11 mission. So you see we got like the striations of actual bacon in there, which I think is very, very cool. Why does it have to be cubes? Because it stacks, it stacks. The oh, spaceship stacks. is small, it's like living in a studio apartment in Brooklyn. Ha <laughs> ha, New Yorkers. Burgers I've stack I've never been in New York. Circles. But there's like, this. It's squares. We didn't, there's no space burgers. Actually, there probably were space burgers. This is what, like 14 ounces of pure meat. That's like what, you know, uh, 80 grams of protein that can be packed into like four square inches. Do you think when they eat their space food, they go like this with all their food and they go, they do, they do, I've seen videos. Um, um, uh, like that? In the ba -da 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 -da. Yeah, da -da -da -da. let's see what it does in our gravity when we're done with this. <laughs> Almost. Ah, that's so hard. Valentina, welcome back. You sound like little girl crying for mother. <laughs> terrible, terrible accent. I, I'll stop doing the Russian accent, I I'm sorry. It. So we, we gotta make the sugar cookie square. So that was a big part of this. Again, like I said, you know, the astronauts, they wanted to be reminded of home. What is more comforting than a lovely sugar cookie? But we got a couple little space tricks up our sleeve uh, to make this safe for space. Make it safe for space? I don't know. Like, what does that mean? Cookies can combust. No, we got things like, we want to decrease the amount of moisture in these cookies. Cause again, we're gonna be freeze drying it and vacuum sealing it, trying to get all that air out. And so we're not gonna be adding egg to it. Instead, what we have is egg white powder. Okay. And we're also 
gonna be adding a couple other binding agents into this that should really let that moisture just sort of dissipate out of that in the freeze drying process. So we're just gonna add sugar to Crisco instead of using butter because butter does have a certain amount of water content in it. Okay. We're just gonna use Crisco, which is just straight hydrolyzed fats. One of the most interesting things about the food in space is that it doesn't taste the same that it would at normal gravity because it experiences something called fluid shift when you're in space. Literally like your sense of balance and your entire brain chemistry gets messed with because you're in zero gravity and the fluids are literally shifting around differently. It affects you smell and taste. Do you want to know something else? I do. Cosmonauts, we, we're called cosmonauts. I knew that one. You all like, like to put the word S, S. in things. Astronaut. Your eyeballs change shape. What? Because of the pressure in your brain, your brain it changes shape of eyeball. Is that true? Yeah. That's also a random disturbing fact that I put on the wheel for <laughs> Jimmy's Google Morning. And I'm gonna have to tell them to take it off because I spoiled it. Cross over, baby. That's how we tell I'm the true have fans. To write new things. <laughs> all right. So we have all that fat cream to the sugar, and then I'm gonna add, this is malted milk powder. Malted milk comes from fermented barley that they then put in dehydrated milk, and this was a huge thing that like the British government would serve the troops because it was considered very, very nutritious, mm. and I also think it's really delicious and baked goods. So I'm just gonna dump that with all the flour in there. I'm gonna do half right now, actually, and then we'll add the rest later. Okay. And then this, powdered egg whites. 2,500 calories of nutritionally balanced food is what NASA's space program is based on, and so what's more protein gonna do for you? We're gonna add some salt. A little bit of vanilla extract, and then can you figure that out? This is soy lecithin. So soy lecithin is an emulsifier. Don't be shy now. I just gotta finger get your, it off. Just I finger your American food. <laughs> Finger I my American finger your American food. food. This is like, I'm gonna have to rub my finger around in yeah, it. Yeah, kind of get it in the goo. Do you want me to turn on while your finger's in there? No. No, that way it'll get it, it'll disperse it. I don't want it, Come Josh. On. Josh. Valentina. <laughs> what was that accent? I feel like this is the only other Russian name that I've heard other than Oksana. Uh, Nina, Nina Sergeyevna. That's the character from The Americans. I've watched The Americans oh. three times through. Season two of The Americans, best season of any show on TV. My parents keep saying to watch it, which is precisely why I don't. We're gonna add some more flour in there. We wanna beat some air into it. Oh, vinegar. We got a little bit of vinegar as well. So one, vinegar is going to decrease the amount of moisture in this because it's gonna make air evaporate faster. But not only that, acetic acid is also a preservative. <laughs> All right, so this is looking good. Yeah, unhook it. That's my next career move, right? What? Revamping the space food program. I already know all the science. None of it's real. I don't want anyone from NASA to watch this episode at all. Just be like, yeah, there you I go. hope that no oh. Russians watch this episode. No, we're gonna lose all of our Russian fans. I like all of you. I'm sorry. Uh, how do you say? Someone look up. I love you in Russian. <laughs> what? Nicole just pulled Nicole that out. I just knew it. <laughs> hey Nicole, I'm gonna move my mouth and then you say it again. Hang on. Love that. All right, so we have the sugar cookie dough. We need to mound this into a square. You want to do that? Everything got to be square, y'all. Everything has to be square because it all has to stack. Wouldn't it be great if I just came out here and I was like, what up? I'm from Russia, y'all. <laughs> I dig on Russian food. I didn't understand vodka until I went to uh, uh, my first Russian restaurant. And then I was like, oh, you got to drink nine shots of it. But then it's good. If you ever watch the movie Eastern Promises, it's <laughs> no. like they, oh, so good. Viggo Mortensen. <laughs> they drink a lot of vodka. And the accent plus the visual of it just Mm. Looks like the vodka tastes better with a Russian accent. All right, so we got this padded out. This is gonna spread a little bit. We still want some height on it because we want it to be about the same size There's as the bacon hole. bars. Finger the hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the spaceship. We're gonna pop that in. I feel like every time we do something successfully, we should be like a Russian gymnast and just be like. Smile, big teeth, big teeth. Valentina, now we got to start the freeze drying process. As you see, this is not as high tech as NASA would probably do it, but we're doing, I feel like Emily can speak to this one on the kind of hillbillyfication of, not that I'm, you know what I'm saying. I know, <laughs> it's okay. You can't offend me about stuff like that. It's like people who like fill up a trash can with oil and then just put a propane burner underneath and deep fry a turkey. You can do that, don't do Ooh, that at home. That is new information for me, <laughs> but I <laughs> It's fun, so this is our like low budget method of freeze drying. So freeze drying is typically done in a big machine for cryo desiccation or whatever, but you can achieve the same results according to the internet at large. We'll see what actually happens. Using dry ice, what's gonna happen is we're gonna layer this food just completely packed with dry ice. And dry ice is so cold that it's gonna turn the water that's inside the food directly into gas that's going to sublimate instead of freeze out of the food. And then we unpack it and we vacuum seal it and then we eat it and then we go to space or Stanley Kubrick directs a film 
And all I'm saying is there's ice walls around. So the, the food's going to fart in there? The food's going to fart in there, yes. That's what I call cool. it. I'm like, I didn't fart, I sublimed. I mean, it sublimed <laughs> out of my anus. Okay, so, uh, peaches. Okay. Millions of peaches, peaches for free or whatever. I don't know that song, Nicole's yep. been playing it. So you're going to take those peaches and kind of like place them around dry ice. Don't touch dry ice because dry ice can like burn you or something. My eighth all grade right. science teacher told me that. You remember eighth grade science? Yeah, Mrs. Batten, she was cool. She lit her desk on fire with like a fire chemical the first day. Oh, it's already smoking. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we got that there. I'm gonna throw some more dry ice on it. So like the American space program, right? Like we were freeze drying a lot of stuff, we're vacuuming a lot of stuff. It sounds like the Russian space program went for the tubifying method. We don't leave much. <laughs> and this is why we got there first. But we got to the moon first. And that's Ooh, the important we part. The we got to the moon. Yeah, that's, no, that was the whole thing, right? What'd you find there? Did you find anything good? <laughs> yeah. Did you find, did you find dirt? No, it was like, yeah, some there was dust. moon dirt. There was some, uh, we played golf on it. Oh. Like that. What, what are oh. you, uh, play, you can't play ice hockey on the moon. You played a sport that you did not even originate. <laughs> you played sport that other people made. Yeah, we made so many sports. We had, we had play. John Day, Arnold Palmer, you know, he invented iced tea and lemonade, and he's a golfer, that's important. What a genius. All right, Valentina, throw some space bacon in there. So that's the ones yes. that just now look like blondies, but I can assure you I are bacon. It. The idea is we're just gonna layer all this stuff. Do a noise like it's falling into a forever abyss. Uh, that sucks. <laughs> I didn't know what noise we were talking about. Hang on. All right, do it. Do it. All right, do it again. If I was falling into a forever abyss, that's what it would be. I don't want to I'm bury these be cookies gentle. completely. Be very gentle. Place them so they don't break. Yeah, be gentle it. like a dainty American woman, not like, you know, the big, tough Russian women. No, I didn't mean you're big. I just, I wasn't trying to insult you, Valentina. I can I, be very, very delicate. <laughs> very delicate? Very like delicate. A flower? You're just I mean, very delicate, no. It's a delicate face you got there. <sighs> it's a delicate little grunt. Move. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm just gonna be over here. I'm chilling. If you need my help, delicate. you don't need help. Delicate, shush. Okay. I do a real delicate. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm inhaling so much of this. It's bad. I think it's fine, right? We have our protective gear on. We sure do. All right, this is pretty good. I'm gonna. <laughs> ha! Give me ten or I crush you. <laughs> Okay, so we have everything packed and dry ice. We're just gonna pop a lid on this and keep it cracked because we don't want to seal it because that, in theory, is how you make a bomb because all these gases are gonna pressurize. And then we're gonna leave this for a couple days until all the dry ice is pretty much gone or mostly gone. Then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna vacuum seal it and then we get to eat it. And it, it's probably gonna, it's gonna be something. American make bomb. <laughs> Real Come original, on, eh? Make little bomb, America. Oh, we did that first too. Really? Traditional Russian dance. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Oh, oh my god. god! Oh god! No! 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 Go back! Go back! Tina, can I call you Tina? Mm, absolutely not. Okay. So we got to vacuum seal this food. It's freeze dried. You can see it. It's a peach. Ah! Thought it was actually gonna shatter. We got to vacuum seal and take all of the air out of that. Like every American when they walk into a room, just suck the air out of everything. <laughs> A lot of anti-American sentiment, eh? Yeah, we have fun. How did you end up being chosen to be the first woman in space? It's a well, heck of an honor. As a child, I wanted adventure and travel, and I wanted to be train driver. She said train driver in every interview. Do you want to be a train driver? I'm like, that's a conductor. <laughs> mm, okay. But anyways, I wanted to travel, but now I drive train in space. Yeah. I guess it's kind of like Does a train in that? space. I also love skydiving. Did you skydive like back in the day? Yes. I feel like it was dangerous I, then. At night, I train. I did not, I do sneak around, did not tell my family. <laughs> no, what? is this? So this is a vacuum sealer. So this is taking all of the air out. So air is what can cause bacteria to come in. So we're gonna seal this off and then that should be good to go in space. Should be freeze dried, feeling pretty hard. The noise sound like cow out for slaughter. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel like there's a lot, a lot of Russian cows being slaughtered. One of my favorite sounds. <laughs> did, did, were you, did you serve in the army? Like do you have that background? Well, I, yes, in the- uh... Did you kill a man? I'm sorry, shouldn't ask, shouldn't ask, shouldn't ask. No, no, we don't talk about that. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. You know, I, I hid things from my family. They did not know I was going into space. How did you hide going into space from your family? It was simple, I did not talk to them. <laughs> I just, you know, you we're caring, not like caring. Americans. We don't need to uh, say, I love you. <laughs> I love you. I'm American, I love you. You say it like that, we don't sound like that. You sound like a cartoon. Okay, you sound like this. I love you. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good though, I like that one. I love you. <laughs> I'm American, I'm Mandy Moore. <laughs> mm, I love you. Was that Walk to Remember? 
Да. Да, това е Walk to Remember. Did you get American films and TV shows in Russia? Some. Which ones? What are your faves? The Walk to Remember. That was the one? I just said French. I remember. Said, remember. It's hard sometimes to keep remembering. How do you do this accent? <laughs> oh, Paul Blart, the mall cop. Kevin James, Paul Blart. That's, that's Russian humor. Fat man, silly mustache. <laughs> 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 now that's something we can all agree on. Yes. Would you go skydiving, Josh? No, 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 no. Me Absolutely neither. not. No, no point. What's up there that you can't find down here? Not enough. No. Get me out of that. No. Nope. All right, one more. One more. Vacuum sealed up. Look at that. This. This looks like space. So food. cool. This is, space food. this is pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about this. The space bacon is looking a little frosty right now. You feel it? I mean, it is absolutely rock hard. We're gonna let this defrost because again, it's gonna be in like a multiple day trip in space. So I guess we're just gonna ha let it hang out in a Burbank. Burger King parking lot for a couple days. Valentina. What? I'm gonna take you oh, on a trip. What? <laughs> I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take you on a trip to the moon. I usually fly solo, but uh, for this, I guess I will eat with you. Uh, thank you in Russian. I don't know how to say it. Prego. <laughs> Valentina, thank you so much for joining me on the moon. Oh, this is not the moon. This is movie set. Look at the, look at the, Stanley. There is Stanley here. <laughs> Stanley Cooper, it's not here. Show yourself, Stanley. Okay, calm, calm down, calm down. We're, let's just, you know what, fine. Let's just get into the space bacon. I'm really excited about it. Are you excited about this? As excited as I can get about anything. <laughs> this is my level of excitement. Here's uh, me, not excited. Yeah? Here's me, medium. Similar? Gives me very excited. Oh, oh. <laughs> a woman of very complex emotions. So take the space bacon. I, I mean, feel it out. It's definitely like lost a lot of moisture. Mm. It smells like bacon. Yes. Let's see if it tastes like bacon. Ooh. Uh, Nostrovia. See. <laughs> mm? I like it. It tastes like a prefab, like bacon jerky product that you yeah, would get. Can you see how dense the meat is? I like it. It's packed thick, but it reeks of bacon essence. It's spongy. It's so spongy. That's all the, the lecithin and all that Ultrax 3 maltodextrin food starch. I'm impressed with what we did. Yeah. All right, well, hey, we got we got some coffee too. This is oh, cool. commonly is it served. Hot? Oh. They just serve a lot of instant coffee in space. You need to keep your energy up in space. You know, it's boredom there, not a lot to do. Ah, it tastes like space coffee. Oh, wow. It's like watery, but also sharp. I love instant espresso. It's actually been sitting in our drawer for the last two We've and a half years. We've had like powdered milk this mm -hmm. whole time. We didn't want to use any of it no, for the coffee. No, drinking it black. This is That's pineapple true. peach drink. Valentina would drink it black. She's a bitter woman, likes and her bitter coffee. And why is this coffee. hot? It's confusing, Nicole. Why is this so hot? Oh, she's been sitting under the lights. Ooh. Mm. That is like somebody oh, yeah. a, melted a sweet tart. It's a pop in the mouth. Dang, was this any in any way good for you? They just needed calories, right? They needed calories in small packages, which is how you end up with dense space bacon and then just the sugariest drinks in the world. There's like electrolytes in there too and all that. Have a cookie. I'm, this Ooh. is very cool. The shrink wrapping. I'm most excited actually, about like, this. Wow. Mmm. You can feel I mean, that's a good sign that all the moisture is out of it from the freeze dry. Josh just became a wood chipper. <laughs> You're right. Well, I mean, this freeze dried really well because, I mean, it's just so crumbly, all the moisture is out of it. It's a little dusty. A little... <laughs> We're <laughs> choke on it. Drink some tang, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, no, Josh, gross. No, no, it's a space Arnold Palmer. Oh, gosh. That's actually pretty good. The really? Yeah, the bitter of the coffee cup. Try it. Try the space palm. I really hate this idea. No, Arnie Palmy, Astro Palmy. Arnie Palmy. This is the driest cookie in the world. What are we gonna call this? This is an official cocktail that we've just covered. Like the the Valentina. You could Valentina. To Valent to Valentina. Valentanga. The Valentanga. <laughs> ah. Wow. Why does my tongue feel numb? That's the fluid shift. That happens Your brain's every all time. jumbling around. You open space for a long time, you go a little crazy. The fluid confusion happens every, <laughs> the morning after a night of drinking, like all the time. Been there. Is it gonna get be? I get hammered in space. All right, should we dig into these peaches? No. You don't like fruit, Valentina? You don't deserve fruit. <laughs> don't deserve fruit? Valentina, take peaches home. <laughs> it's a nice treat for Valentina. I'm gonna keep eating my meat. I feed it to my dog. Thank you. I'll take that. I'm weaker than your dogs, apparently.
Today's ancient meal comes from 47 AD, where Julia Agrippina, aka Agrippina the Younger, is accused of killing her husband, the Emperor Claudius, with a plate of poisoned mushrooms just so her son Nero could ascend to the throne. Ooh, the drama. I know. Ooh. So we don't exactly know what was served at this ancient banquet, but we do know a fair amount about the ancient Roman diet. They ate a lot of like foraged mushrooms, they ate a lot of cheese, they ate a lot of game meats, but a majority of their diet was bread. So we're gonna take a stab at the ancient Roman Panis Focaccius, which is a yeast-risen flatbread that originated in the Etruscan Empire. Now, many people can considered to be the forefather of pizza, but after the Etruscan Empire died in 27 AD, then that tradition was taken on by the Romans, and then of course that carried on, so then that didn't become a tradition on pizza until the Neapolitans. The term margarita pizza wasn't even coined until 1898 with the unification of Italy. Hey, there's like a boner on this. There's one there, but there's also one there. Do people have tails back then? Phallic imagery was common among the stone paintings of the Pompeians. So this is a photo of a rock I have a tail. You could see it in yoga class. <laughs> All right, so when Mount Vesuvius erupted, right, destroyed Pompeii in 79 AD, and this is a rock carving that was actually discovered that illustrates what was essentially the street food scene in Pompeii, and you can see this man, it looks so much like a modern pizza baker. He's sticking a giant rod into a small hole, and he's baking some sort of a flatbread, so we think that this was probably the precursor to pizza. Whoa, maybe he's sitting on like a stick. Oh, you're trying to figure out what that rod is going down there. What were you trying to figure out? Well, there's the rod going into the hole and then there's a rod between his legs. Well, there's too many rods either way. All right, so we don't know the actual menu for the poison plate, but we do know a fair amount about the ancient Roman diet. They ate a lot of cheeses, they ate a lot of forage, mushrooms, they ate a lot of game meat, but a majority of their diet was bread. And so we're taking a stab Are at the Are we gonna ancient... make poison pizza? Yeah, we're making poison pizza, it's pretty metal. <sighs> all right, you wanna take a stab at playing Julia Agrippina and I'll uh, take care of the food? Toga! Toga, 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 toga. No, it was called like a stola or something. There, there's a J Julia, I may presume. Who are you? I, well, I, I, I am your humble servant today. I am your cook. I will be making you your feast. I, I just heard some rumors, so I'm gonna move this knife real quick. Don't take it personally at all. <laughs> personally. Okay. You look like the contestant that acts intentionally crazy on The Bachelor so she can stay on for like seven episodes and get an Instagram following and then send, sell diet pills. Can I steal you for a sec? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you ready to get down to this pizza? You got plotting face right now. You're plotting. I can tell you're plotting and I don't like it. I just don't feel comfortable when I don't have a knife. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think it's safer in my hands. Someone Let's else has a knife that and I don't. Doesn't seem fair. <laughs> all right, so we have to start. This recipe starts. We're making pizza, but we are also making a ancient Roman fermented fish condiment called garum that was in almost all of the dishes. And I'm sure you know that, of course. Mm-hmm, yeah, I know all of that. We have to start by disemboweling this fish. So I'm just gonna take this knife and I'm just gonna run it into these small fish and I'm just gonna try and get it underneath that breastplate to expose Ooh. the guts. You see a little bit of that blood coming out. And then when you flay it open, this is the good stuff. So this is gonna give us flavor. This is essentially a fermented fish sauce. Now Pliny the Elder, you probably know Pliny, you're a homie with him. We're on speaking terms yeah. at the moment, but <laughs> we've had issues. Yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. So Pliny wrote about this in the 77 AD book, Natural History, he wrote a whole recipe for it, but mm -hmm. there are a bunch of different recipes. If you find it in the Roman street cookbook, Apicius, which is written in vulgar language, not classic Roman, that was passed around Ooh, among the peasants. I love vulgar language, and so it does my brother Caligula. God, Caligula doing... was your brother? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, what a family. He's having a party tonight, actually. You're welcome to come. I am probably chilling for that. I yeah. think, yeah, I think you'll do. Oh God, I don't feel comfortable. Let's make the thing, this is called garum. We need to start with nine parts fish to one part salt, and then we're gonna let this ferment in the hot Mediterranean sun. Although it's a little bit rainy in Burbank today, so we may have to just do this in the oven. Burbank. You've been to the kingdom of Burbank. Never heard of it. Sounds harsh. Oh, you should go to the Warner Brothers Tower. Warner Brothers. Are, who are they? Are they going to come and try to ascend the throne? They, the Warner Brothers may try to How many the are there? I believe two, I don't really know. I've taken the tour, it's There's nice. There's three, it's Yakko, Smacko, and Dot. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that it? Is it Yakko, Smacko, and Dot? Hold some fish, hold some fish. I need you to be my scale. So you're gonna try and hold this wow, fish just one hand. <laughs> this is all the salt we have. So hold gonna... the fish in one hand, hold the salt in the other. I need you to weigh out nine parts fish to one part salt. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, when the fish outweighs the salt by nine times. What was their measuring system back in the day? Well, they, they did this. They had a, what was called the balance scale, right? It's like the classic image of the Libra. It's, Emily, come on! Oh, 
<laughs> so let me stack the fish. Yo, we meant to get a balance scale and I totally is forgot, this so whole... this is the bit. You know what, let's just use all of them. We got all these fish, we have all the guts intact. Like I said, there are many different recipes for garum. Oh, it's essentially God. the same process as like a modern Puddle. Vietnamese fish sauce, but it's ancient Roman version. And they say some of the most prized was just made with straight tuna's blood. Then some was made with just fish guts. Some was made with whole fish themselves. So what I'm gonna do, I kind of combine them. Right. I'm taking the classic elements of all the best Roman garum. We're gonna take some tuna's blood here. We're just gonna dump that in the pot. And then we're gonna also hit it with some old wine. So they would take the wine that had gone bad, got a little sour, kind of turned into vinegar a little bit. Okay. And then we're gonna use that to flavor this, this fish sauce. I think it's gonna be really delicious though. Uh oh, there he goes. Dump all that salt in here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. All right. It's great, and then can you just get in there and sort of massage it around? You're making me do a lot for I, someone that I don't know. I want you to be involved in this process. Like, this Listen, is a banquet for I'm in the husband. middle of hiding from something right now, so if you could just, like, be as chill as possible. What are you hiding from? What do you want me to start with? <laughs> So we're gonna leave this in the oven at 140 degrees and we're gonna do this for five days, even though Romans would typically do this for like months, but five days seems to be the sweet spot for where you really get all those insides to melt down. 140 degrees should be food safe for pasteurization. If you're doing this at home, you're not, but like don't do it probably. Do your own independent research, but this is what I came up with. This is what I'm comfortable putting in my body. I'm not gonna say my body. You're gonna choice. find out what you're comfortable with. Tonight. What, what's happening tonight? I told you the party. I don't exactly know what Caligula did at his parties. I just know it was bad. Well, I just come in with an open. <laughs> what's, what's open? Well, this is what a bunch of fish that have been fermenting in the oven for five days looks like. As you see, I mean, it's all really crushed up and we left the guts inside this fish, so it's all really crushed and they've also mm. released a lot of liquid. If you really dig down in there, this is the good stuff. And so what I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna take all this and then dump it into this pot with a strainer. Typically this would be done with a you wicker need, basket. You need me to scoop that out of there with pour? Uh, uh, we're good. No. And then we're gonna cook it down because we wanna really concentrate these flavors. And so I'm gonna try and just kind of dump a lot of the fish into there and then really kind of push it through. That's nice. Get out, fish, come on! There we go. We got some more. We can let that go. And then I'm just gonna kind of mash at these fish. You see it just falls apart into a mush. Ooh, you know that I have not been a sissy in any of these episodes, right? You've not, I've been very proud of you. Thank you, but this smell, this what? smell is weird. This is the smell of flavor. All right, so check this out, come over here. No, Julie, I give not. Give it a whip, smell the fish! Gosh, I'm gonna smell barf. Smell the fish juice! I'm gonna barf into that pot. It's, don't barf into the pot. That was, probably a Roman, <laughs> that was probably a Roman recipe too. Oh my God, I know what you're saying. Emily, wow, this right now doesn't smell so great, but we got some old wine, so. Typically, Romans would use some like wine that had kind of turned brown and sort of oxidized and it's not good anymore. But if you want to taste that, this is wine that art director Mike Paisley's friend made in their backyard. So we're, we're trying to get as close so to the Roman recipe. So not even Dirty Paisley, it's Dirty Paisley's friend? It's one Dirty P. from Dirty P. I'm calling him Dirty P. Yeah, now. Mike's great, we love Mike, but he's the type he's of guy that would have, he would have shady wine. Are we gonna drop the phone for this? Drop it like it's trash. Oh my God, that's a spoon on the floor, we should get it. Drink the toilet wine. Hang on. All wine is technically made in a toilet if you really <laughs> It's not bad, right? All right, so we're gonna take some of the toilet wine and I'm gonna drop it into this. That is classic toilet wine. You wanna give this a taste? So we're gonna let it reduce down for maybe 30 minutes until it gets nice and sort of thick and then we can use it as a flavoring, but try it. Emily, come on, it's for history. <laughs> Josh, I don't know. It's good stuff, it's safe. Oh, Dionysus. Woo <laughs> Reminds me of the time I opened my mouth at St. George Island in Florida. You're just breathing it in. I just went to the ocean like, yay, breathing the ocean! Adventure. And then it just <laughs> all went in my mouth. Yeah, but I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Like people talk about uni and caviar and getting the flavor of ocean in your mouth. They don't talk about Roman stank fish and blood. Oh, so that's just gonna be there for the rest of the day, huh? Yeah, well, not only it's that, flavored. we're gonna be adding this to pretty much everything that we do because Romans would actually use this as salt because getting pure salt could have been expensive. So people would always keep this. And I mentioned garum. This is actually the liquid strained form called liquimin. Very similar to Vietnamese fish sauce. Really delicious, tons of umami. We're gonna add this to the rest of the ingredients that go on this pizza. Hey, can we do like, instead of the little Caesar pizza pizza, it's just like garbage, garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Julie, so now we have to start on our panis focaccia. So panis obviously is Roman for bread, and then focaccia means- I'm sorry, what did you say? Panis. I just wanted to hear it again. It's pan, it's panis. Panis, like panis at the yeah. disco. You, 
They're good. So <laughs> we are making that, and focaccias comes from the word focus, which was the name of the hearth. So this was literally cooked on the floor of the hearth. We're trying to recreate that situation in our oven, but first, we gotta do this the old Roman way, baby girl. So we're, I like to call you baby girl. That's creepy as all heck. Poor choice of words. Yeah. We're doing this, Emily, my esteemed coworker and friend. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna do, we got sacks of wheat. Oh, These are okay. whole wheat berries. <laughs> you just, um, all right. That's, you oh, seem no, skittish it's like, around knives. Listen, it's very hard to kill me. My son's already tried three times. Ow. What? He doesn't know I'm in here. So. I don't want to meet your I don't want to meet any of your friends. They sound crazy. My son is not my friend. What well, any of the people oh, are you, you know. Are you like one of those modern parents who thinks your kids are your friends? I hope They're to not. Be. I They're hope. your mortal enemies and you have to have them killed. I hope my kids can open up to me with anything. I Do hope you want to know how he's tried to kill me so far? Yeah, regrettably. So maybe you can try something new. <laughs> I don't want to kill you. First, he tried to poison me, but I had the antidote because I created the poison in the first place. And then the next time he tried to make a machine that would like fall on me while I was sleeping, like make my ceiling <laughs> what? fall on me. But then I like That's found some James out about Bond it. villain type stuff. Uh, I don't know who that is, but he sounds awesome. Anyway, so I found out he was gonna do it because he's a big mouth. He talks a lot. Yeah, he, he, he bragged that he was a lot, trying. lot, runs his mouth. He's an idiot. That's why mommy needs you to run You made everything. him. I know, I know, and I can break him. And then the last one was, and this is really, really, it just shows how much he loves me. He made a collapsible boat, but I got away. So I think I'm indestructible. I can't help you with any of that, but I can make you a pizza. The party tonight also helps a lot with our family trauma. Yeah, that makes sense. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna grind these whole wheat berries oh, by I hand. I love so grinding. Really, yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, so you're just gonna go ahead and take these whole wheat berries. We're not gonna sift it. We're trying to go like real rustic Roman style. Typically you'd use this in a mill, but if you didn't have access to a mill, you just grind it by hand. But you gotta like really get in there. You're doing a bad job. Penis. 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 Focaccius, of course. Bash, bash, harder bashing, harder bashing. Yeah, 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 keep going. Yeah, don't bite your bottom lip when you do it though. That makes it weird for the people. I give you everything. I give you everything and this is how you treat me! Ah! Some people put love into their cooking. She seems to put familial hatred in it. I really do think you have to crunch it. No, you're doing good, you're doing good, you're doing good. Yeah, don't, when don't are you mind me. get this thing out? You don't gave mind me, this me. Thing, don't you mind me. that thing? Yeah, well, you're doing, you're doing good. You wanna give it a whack? Definitely. We're trying to grind this up. These are whole wheat berries. Your refined white flour would be without the bran and the chaff. But we're using whole wheat flour because we're healthy. We got You said I could have a turn! Have a turn, just mash at it a little bit. That's looking good. I like what's going on Why there. Why does this also stink? Everything stinks. I got fish guts on my bare feet. On his penis. <laughs> Don't put the fish guts on your penis. Alright, this is looking good. This is looking good. This is looking good. It looks like flour, right? Like it sure does. Doesn't smell like it though. Check it out, it's got kind of hot from the Vitamix, but it's a very coarse ground flour. If you have a home mill, that might be the way to do it. But we're just rocking with the flour. So I'm gonna take some water. I'm just gonna add into there. We're gonna get a little bit of honey in there. Honey was very commonly used as a sweetener in Rome. Oh. And so honey is also what helps yeast ferment. We're gonna add some yeast. So we are kneading this into a loose dough. It's looking kind of wet, but that's how I want it. Cause this eventually actually gets covered in salt water. It is mm -hmm. a modern like Lejurian I love how it, it smells like the ocean in here and that looks like sand. All right, so we got this dressing. We need to cover this. We're gonna let the yeast take its course and then we're gonna start making our penis focaccious. Our penis has doubled in size. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. This is never gonna air. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn this out. You know what, first up, are you gonna turn dump it out? this oil. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of spread this around because focaccia, ton of oil associated with it. So we're gonna turn this out where it's covered in oil on the bottom. And then Ooh. I'm just gonna take this. Are we gonna get a sensuous close up on this sponginess? As sensuous as you make with, it. With like that sexy music where it's like it got a little bit of haze around it. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So actually it's great that we're kind of fingering this because the typical way to make focaccia is you would put kind of finger holes in it as you spread it and spread more oil on top. Okay. And then you actually fill the holes with water and that sort of hydrates the bread in the very hot heat. Speaking of hot heat, if you want to check out our oven rig. Wow. They didn't have modern ovens in Rome. No, they didn't. So we put a bunch of rocks in our oven to try and mimic what a Roman hearth would maybe be. So we're gonna try and cook this directly on that hot stone there. Dirty Mike Paisley has told us. Dirty P. Dirty P told us that this is probably gonna work. And I'm inclined to believe him. So what we're gonna do, you wanna take some of this and sprinkle it on the rock. This is semolina, this is coarse ground flour sprinkle that's hopefully gonna stop it from. But I'm not supposed to touch the rock, right? Do not touch the rock. The rock has been super heating for a long time. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this oily bread oh and I'm gonna no. try and throw it directly on the rock. Okay. One, two. 
<gasps> kind of spread it out a little bit. Way to go, bro! That's perfect. And then we can just kind of shape it into a circle and then get some finger holes in there. I can't help but think that if Agrippina was here, she'd probably close this door. And now all I can think about <laughs> is impulsively wanting to close the door. Don't you know Sophie those thoughts? me! You know those thoughts you have sometimes, like when you're in church yeah. and you're like, I could run up there and pull my pants down on the altar and take a poop. Yeah, that's why I don't like holding knives. I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm gonna fill up all of our finger holes and the water is gonna evaporate. That bottom should get nice and crisp. Ah! It's fine, we're doing good. And then we're just gonna close that up and we're gonna let it bake for about 20 minutes to a half an hour until it's golden brown. And then now we gotta make our toppings. Is it that bucket of filth? We're gonna use the bucket of filth. Yes, it's going in the topping. It's gonna be good, open your mind. Okay. And if something tastes bad, no one notices the taste of poison. 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 <laughs> We're gonna make a pizza topping. They typically would not have topped panis focaccias with much, but like, I wanna take some liberties with these ancient Roman recipes. So we're gonna add some olive oil to a pan, and typically they would go for wild foraged meadow mushrooms is what they called them, but we probably do not have the same species that they had. So instead, we're just gonna use some wild mushrooms of our own. These are chanterelles, typically foraged, a really delicious product. Then we're using some oyster mushrooms as well, with a little bit of uh, hen of the woods in there, and then also some king trumpets, which have a very meaty, awesome consistency. And we're gonna let them cook down in olive oil. Typically would have been done on an open fire. I think we can take some liberties. You know what I just realized? What's that? Agravina kind of told you way too many secrets. Yeah, no, I feel like I could really take down someone's political career with what I know right now. Yeah. What's, what's that in your hands? Oh, I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even know <laughs> no, this. Sometimes, sometimes the knife ends up in your hands and- Every male in my family has murdered someone. When I do it, it's like, it's like, oh, when a woman does it, it's it's not cool. But when a man does it, it's ambitious. Do you get that? I think that Agrippina the Younger was a feminist. You know, I think that she really was like the first, first wave of feminism. If you see, wow, we got some really great color on these shrooms. Oh, nice. And so we're gonna cook this down in what's called coroinum. Coroinum was essentially this ancient Roman sweetener that was made of cooked down grape musk that doesn't exactly exist today, but there is a product called vincotto, literally translating to cooked wine. And so this is essentially the raw wine before it's fermented that you cook down, mash the grapes with all the seeds and the stems to get that tannic flavor. And so we're just gonna add that to these mushrooms. We're gonna try and cook it in a bit of a syrup and then a bottle of your finest fish stank. Ugh. And so instead of salt, we're actually going to be using that. <laughs> yeah, get a whiff of that. No, it smells I don't. really good. I you smell this and I smell good things. Josh, I have been very chill. Shake I've these branches at the chill. fish stink. Ooh, that looks pretty. Is Shake that what branches. you swat people with to yeah. like clean them in a bathhouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you hold it, I'll slap it. You know, be careful. I'll be careful. Just kind of give it a little tap. Okay, I like Give the that. herbs a little tappy tap. That's good. Like, ooh, bad herb. Ooh, ooh. you're ooh. bad. I actually think this is going to taste really incredible. I mean, these are flavors that I love. The Encoto is fantastic. It was used in ancient Rome pretty much. I mean, this fish tank is basically fish sauce, which I add to my bolognese as it is. We got just a whole ass branch in there. I know. Tiny little tree. And then we got rosemary and oregano. And I mean, these mushrooms are just getting so glazy. So we're gonna let these cook a little bit more and then we're actually going to toss this on top of our pizza, make it like a real modern dish that anyone would pay $22.99 for in Silver Lake. This looks like a dirty flower. Dirty flower sounds like you've missing for something else. We have the pan that's out of the oven and this is looking really freaking, I mean, oh. it, it's so rustic. We used that whole wheat flour. I'm really curious about the taste on this. Right now, we're gonna top it like an American pizza. So there's a thing that exists later. You know the uh, Caesar? Yeah, pizza, yeah. pizza, garbage, garbage. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're hitting, hitting it with a little Caesar treatment. We're gonna go a little bit of fresh olive oil on there. Mm. And then we're gonna start cutting up some Pecorino Romano. So like Pecorino literally Romano. Sounds like a bird. So I'm just gonna take off like some nice rustic hunks. This cheese is going on a nice rustic I'm wearing penis. baby Spanx. Yeah, the outfit's something. We ordered a large, but it's from Amazon, so I don't know what lar what whose version of large is. Roman troops used to snack on Pecorino Romano. It was a way to take the sheep's milk and then you would essentially, you know, preserve it using salt. And actually cheese making dates back thousands of years mm -hmm. in the Odyssey by Homer, the Cyclops. Come on, oh, what's the Cyclops' name? One-Eyed Jack. Old One-Eyed Jack, the Cyclops. One-Eyed Willy the Cyclops. In Homer's Odyssey, you know. Oh. They actually reference him making cheese in a cave. Can we call it John Goodman? Because John Goodman represented the Cyclops in O Brother, oh, Brother Where, Where Art Thou. Where Art Thou, yeah. I love like movie, like modern movies that are plays on old tales. Have yeah. you seen um, uh, Sidney White? No. Amanda Bynes, Sidney White, she goes to college and deals with all the stuff, but it's Snow White in the Seven Drawers. It's Snow White in the Seven, seven Drawers. drawers. The seven That's a drawers. lot of drawers for a dorm room. Josh. Yeah. I'm in Sydney White. You're in Sydney Everybody, White? Everybody, you have to keep yeah. this in the edit. Keep this in the edit. Ben was in was Sydney in White. This. That's a good movie, though. What were you doing in it? Did you have a mustache? I was a construction worker. Dude, uh, yeah, because her dad's a construction worker in Sydney White. Yeah. How'd you get that gig, dude? 
I was living in Florida at the time. I worked on that movie. That's so sick. We got all this pecorino spread around there. We got the olive oil on it. Oh, wow. Is that good? Yeah. I'm swapping spoons. Hold on. Oh, I, well, I got a whole peppercorn. That's Woo! flavorful. That is going to go so well with the super sharp cheese. Oh, man. I'm getting excited now. Do we have to put that dirty, dirty meat on this? No, the dirty meat's in the mushrooms. You're tasting the dirty. That's so much fish stank. He in the tricked me. You've got a trick, baby. You snuck something into my food. <laughs> this is punishable by death. Sneaking things into food seems to be a big theme back then. Well, I mean, it's the easiest way to do things. <laughs> All right, so we got this all nice and done up. Might top it with a little bit of fresh carinum, and then we're just gonna go back in the oven for about 10 minutes, crisp it up, really make it nice and pizza -y, hit some herbs on it, and then we get to eat. Julia, welcome to your feast where nothing bad ever happens. So Thank we have you. some beautiful soft sheep's milk cheese here. As of course you know, they basically broke down into soft cheeses and hard cheeses. We got some dates, we got some figs. Y'all seem to love eating small birds. So we got some quail eggs and some wild game birds here. Oh. Of course, olives, herbs, and honey. But the star, we got this mushroom in Coroinum pizza right here. I'm gonna dig into it. Allow me. Yeah, you feel comfortable handling the, oh, you look real comfortable handling I'm that very knife comfy, there. Yes. Do you just want me to hand it to you? Kinda, or just... I think you still need to cut it. I need to cut it? Yeah, yeah. I just thought, you know, we just fold it in, in half like a. Like a New Yorker, like you're a real authentic New York style pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a shame this will be the last and first time we have ever spent time together. I don't think so. I think we're gonna do this a lot. I think, you know, you and I kind of hit it off out there. I think we have some things in common, obviously some differences. You know what? No one has ever said that to me. Oh my God. No one ever thinks they're gonna do a lot of things with me. I've made a friend. All right, I'm gonna pile some more mushrooms on there. To me, that's the star. To old and new and never friends. I'm excited to make friends. Come on. Um. Come on, even you with a hardened heart have to be warmed up by this delicious freaking pizza. I don't have a hardened heart, I feel everything. <laughs> the pecorino is such a strong flavor because it had to be aged and preserved for so long. And the mushrooms have a little bit of sweetness and then the freaking fish sauce, garum, liquid and funk coming in. It's so savory, the bread is super crispy and delicious and it tastes like pizza and it's all ancient Roman ingredients. Come on. It's very good. Seeing as the sausage was made though, yikes. Taste the soft sheep's milk cheese, this stuff is dank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Get quite a leg in there. No. Get quite a leg in there. Let me bite, I want to bite into it. Oh, it popped. Yeah, it's like a gusher. It popped really hard. Quite like your nature's gushers. Ooh, that's actually really good. Romans really did eat well, and they codified so much of their food. You see that in Pliny the Elder's natural history. You see that in Apicius. There's some awesome stuff out there, and I'm so glad that I could take this journey with you that mm. I hope will last a lifetime. Lifetimes. <laughs> <laughs> they sure vary, don't they? They, yeah. They do. What? Shall we toast? Absolutely, Julia, you have a big banquet to go to and I don't want to keep you from that, but I think we should cheers to something. Sure, hang on. Just one sec. I just, you have more than me. <laughs> okay. I don't want you to have. Like friends want to be generous with each other. Yep, 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 yep. What, that's what yours. are you smelling here? Friendship. <laughs> oh, that's just like you. Cheers to friendship. Yes. Mm. So, Emily, the meal that we're recreating today, this is from Christmas in 1870. This is the 99th day of the siege on Paris by the Prussian forces that was led by the Iron Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. They had surrounded Paris. There were a ton of different crazy political things that went into this. French government was sort of on a decline, Napoleon III on the way out, a new Republican pseudo-democratic government coming in, but Paris was under siege during a particularly harsh winter. And so they had already been eating horses for a long time to sort of just get a cheap source of meat. But then by this time, all that meat had run out and so they had to turn to zoo animals, but the aristocracy was still such a big deal in Paris that these restaurants were still serving these lavish meals. So here we see a full tasting menu with zoo animals. This is one of the craziest artifacts of history. You see, you got your typical stuff. You got radishes, butter, you got sardines, and then you got a full stuffed donkey head. Whoa. Because that's just what they were doing. So we are actually gonna be making some of these. We're not gonna use any of the animals that are like illegal or like super messed up to eat, but there's some on here that are commonly eaten in other cultures. Like you see, you got the roast camel, you got a kangaroo stew. And so to me, this is like one of the most fascinating times in history and it shows what people can do in times of great strife. I see d'elephant, <laughs> yes. which is elephant with a D in front of it. Yeah, that's Good job, French. France. 
The animals that went first were the ones that are similar to the animals that we eat, right? You had yak and antelope and the kind of ruminants, but eventually they got down to elephant, including two very famous elephants that would parade around the Luxembourg Gardens named Castor and Pollux, and they too were eaten for meat. Again, war is hell. This is a dark time in history. True. Come on, folks. It's survival of the, I don't know. Of the Frenchest. Yeah, the Frenchest is it the really right was. way. Yeah, yeah. You see, this is a full tasting menu. You got your little salads here because they still had the gardens. And again, they're French, so they were drinking wine and eating cheese with every single meal. And the siege would end up lasting for five months because basically the Prussians didn't want to waste their artillery going after the French. And so the Parisians were really just locked in with nothing to do, no information in or out. All they had was just their French culture and their zoo animals to eat. I'm gonna try to get excited about it. Maybe the um, Cotes de Dors Roti sauce? Uh, Cotes de Roti sauce poivrade. Poivrade. <laughs> cool, I'm guessing you're not a French speaker. I took it. <laughs> but did not retain it. <laughs> well, you think you can sort of cobble together a character? I imagine you got a whole like dramaturgy written up. This may be my greatest challenge. God, I can't wait. I'll be right back. Uh, uh, bonjour, parlez-vous français? Hello to you, sir. Ah, <laughs> uh, I bring you some meat that is different. Okay, okay, may I ask what's different about it? It's camel. It's camel. Where did you get the camel meat? That's not important. So you were the one who was wrangling up the meat. Also, can I ask, you are a, uh, a rat? Yes, presumably. I am a rat. Thank you for noticing that I am not a mouse. <laughs> Uh, this seems maybe derivative of a certain uh, uh, Disney property. If I oh, may. yeah, yeah, yeah. I am the rat that that is based on. Okay. I am not Remy. My name is Lenny. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I started working in kitchens around the time that we're going to be discussing today. Great, uh, so do, I mean, do you wanna like, do you want me to pop on a hat and you kind of hop under it? And... Oh no, that's one of the main differences from yeah, the movie. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He was in a tiny hat pulling the guy's hair around. I was really in a guy's pants looking through the zipper, also pulling a guy's hair to make him do stuff. It's similar, but not the same. Please don't crawl in my pants. If you insist. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, this is camel and this is coming. Rat. It's directly... not rat, it's... that's what's important. So we have a standing camel rib roast right yep, here. Yep, yep. I don't need to tell you about that. You're a chef, of course. No, I mainly just find the meat, um, Some, <laughs> but uh, I, I do a little bit of seasoning from time to time. Let's go, well, do you want to Mostly me... it's like, look over there, don't eat a rat. <laughs> Do you want to help me tie this up? Yeah, sure. Lift up the camel meat. Get your little sure. paws in there. Get your little paws. Oh, it's nice. Also, and I was cold. hoping you'd go way more like Marissa Tomei from uh, My Cousin Vinny. Wait, you know, keep it, keep it lifted. Keep no, it lifted. I am clearly a man rat. You're clearly. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, no. Keep, keep the camel lifted. Keep the camel lifted. Keep I'm gonna lay all these it, under here. Keep the camel lifted. So we're making what is a chameau roti à l'anglaise, uh, which is roast camel in the style of the English, I suppose. Well, I'll just keep it lifted. And I'm gonna keep. Oh, it. I just got an idea about the Mr. Tomei thing. Go ahead. Because it's like the beat thing. It's like it's clock. It's tick. And like, yes! <laughs> Is that good? That was good. That That's was good. a good reference yeah, to a movie that no one watches anymore. We're just gonna be cooking this like a roast beef, essentially. So this is like an English style oh. roast beef, and this was served at the restaurant Voisin on their Christmas day, 99th day of the siege tasting menu. This is one of the main courses. So this is just cooked like an English roast, prime rib, whatever you wanna call it. How tight, it. how tight we think. Pretty tight, because the goal is to get this as even as possible. Oh. And so like, just try and follow kind of where mine's going here. We want it to be a little bit circular. Well, I messed that one up, <laughs> but I am a rat, just, so. <laughs> so what jobs were available for rats outside of the kitchen? Uh, there was uh, the poop ball gathering. Yeah. I, I got, I kind of graduated out of that. Yeah, you don't, you don't poop ball gathering. No, 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 no. It's one rat's job, usually the one at the bottom of the totem pole in the uh -huh. kitchen to just gather it all in the room. Roll it out. Yeah. <laughs> Some would be concerned about the amount of rat poop in a kitchen. Well, that's why we have the, the roller. Okay, <laughs> I'm so sorry. We yeah. handle it, we handle it. I don't mean to come into, into, into your world and tell well, you it's what okay, to do. you don't know how my kitchen works. <laughs> I don't know how your kitchen works. You don't seem to be making assumptions. Your kitchen might be cleaner than ours, despite all the rats, uh, mm. if we're being honest. I'm just gonna tie this in. I'm just gonna, I'm not saying you did a bad job. No, 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 no. During the siege, what, what else is going on? I mean, were you scared? Cause like you were used to freewheeling Paris as you know it, you know? But I mean, during the siege, normal days for you or what was going on? Well, I was a little scared, mainly because of the whole like, people were like, maybe we should eat the rats. <laughs> but um, mainly it was just because the leftovers were a lot, that the trash wasn't really a lot of food in there anymore because people didn't have food. Yeah. So I was like, what are we gonna do? Oh no. And then I started like, I'd hang out in the, the zoo sometimes. Yeah, and then you started finding the zoo animals. So that's how. Well, I like the zoo because there's like a big cat called a lion yeah. behind the cage. Yeah, so like, you, <laughs> <laughs> well, while most of the Parisians were worried about like the political future of France and also Europe from Prussian aggression, right. you were just more worried about taunting the big cat for being a stupid idiot behind Listen, a cage. We're not political rats. 
We're gonna be here no matter what. <laughs> That's true. No matter what happens, we're around, just uh, unless you eat us. That is the main thing. I think there's something beautiful and simple about that. Yeah, but I mean, like, a good life. Paris is like the center of art and culture throughout all this. I mean, I mean, did, yeah. you, did you see plays, you know? Do you like architecture? What's your thing? I did enjoy the gas lamps that Napoleon III started putting up, <laughs> or our Prince President, as he called himself for a little while. That's so funny. You said you weren't political. Here you are rattling well, off Napoleon the Third facts. He was a funny guy. He was a little funny guy, and he said weird stuff. But he got all these gas lamps, and that's why it's called, you know, the City of Lights. Of course, ah. people burned them down. Yeah, it makes sense. Later. Paris went through a lot. In like a hundred years, they, they were just bombed constantly, sieged mm -hmm. constantly, but still they kept just putting out food, putting out art, being the center of culture. Look at them. Yeah. They survived like rats. The Parisians are rats. The comment section is gonna be rough <laughs> for right, you. So, so we've tied up the roast, we've got this all salted. Again, this is a very simple preparation. This is let, to let the meat shine. And camel is a meat mm. that is pretty commonly eaten-ish, albeit for special occasions all across the Middle East. So this is gonna be really delicious, I think. And we're oh, gonna yeah. make a quick little jus right here. We're gonna add flour so it thickens up to just some, uh, we're gonna call this antelope stock because they also ate antelopes. I'm sure you were out I there remember, scouting I antelopes. Remember. I didn't know much about them. I wasn't, I didn't socialize with them a lot. Yeah, it, I mean, you, you haven't been outside of Paris. You hang out at the zoo. Do you know what these animals are? Like, did you think they were, they oh, were edible? I, I was friends with a few. The hippo, I really like that guy. Yeah, it's kind of a giant rat that eats and mauls people, huh? Kinda. He was we're adding Worcestershire to this, by the way. Very fun to spank. You get on top of them and you're like, hey, how you doing? And spanking the hippo is not a euphemism for anything. No. So we're creating the base of the jus here. So this is a uh, stock. It's flour, it's some herbs de Provence, it's some peppercorn. We'll take a couple garlics. Does a rat know what a palm heel strike is? Well, I don't have much of a palm <laughs> as a rat. <laughs> kind of like a tiny little, little yeah. do that. You're like, you're like, like, you're like clawing or something? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, do it, do it. I just realized that my rat scrunchie might be in the way. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so there we go. All right, all right, let's try, let's see. Yeah, that's uh, close. <laughs> that's close. That's great. You did good. You crushed the garlic. We don't nice. even need to take the skins off. We're going to strain this later. Okay. And then we're just going to pop that roast on that there. That is beautiful. Right? I think it's going to be really good. Ooh, that really smells good. nice. And the thing about this is like only the aristocrats are eating this, right? Because like not the aristocrats, by the way. That's triggering for you and I understand that. I do love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Even that couldn't shake you. Well, I mean, if cats could sing, I wouldn't mind what jerks they're they They're the are. good cats. But they're not, they can't even sing. I'm like the only animal I know who could talk. <laughs> so Wait, so none sing. of the, I'm sorry, none of the other rats talk? You're the only talking rat? Yep, that's kind of how I How did this happen? I don't know, I just started talking. <laughs> I guess. Uh, really? But only in English. <laughs> <laughs> and only in, the, in, in a Brooklyn accent. Have you ever been to Brooklyn? Do you know what Brooklyn is? I've been to Brooklyn, Paris. <laughs> We're gonna pop this in the oven. We're just gonna let it go. We're gonna revisit it later. I'm gonna tent it with foil just to get the temperature up and then I'm gonna take it off, blast it, sort of crisp up that camel fat cap. Mm. I cannot stress to you enough, this is a camel and I've never eaten it before, but I'm pretty excited about it. They're jerks. They're jerks? Yeah. They spit? Yes. Screw yes. them. I'm a tiny rat, I can drown. <laughs> to all the camels out there watching, don't spit on rats. Yeah. She just wants Stick to Stick on live. someone your own size. Fight the hippo. All right, we're gonna pop this in the oven. Whoa, Nelly. All right, and now we're gonna let that go. All and right. uh, you, speaking of kangaroos, huh. <laughs> you can find me one? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Lenny. What's up? You got me the kangaroo. Did you strip the meat off of its flesh yourselves with your tiny razor sharp claws? No, I just know a guy. Just, <laughs> you just know a guy. <laughs> uh, well, do you want to butcher this down for me? Do you want sure. to just cut it into like large stewish cubes? So what we're making right now is called Sive de Kangaroo, which was on the actual Christmas day menu. Yeah, there you go. Uh, at restaurant Voisin. Sive actually means relating to chives, which is why we have a bunch of different alliums here. This dish was typically made in the spring and it was also typically made with a wild hare or a lièvre. The religious symbolism of this dish is that it is thickened with its own blood, so we also have some blood. Uh, you, you did, though, leech the kangaroo of its own blood. I told you, I know a guy, I don't do that kind of stuff. I just go, hey, kill that thing. I believe uh, you. Not I me. Be Look, times were tough back then. You had to do what you had to do, you know I what know, I mean? I know, I know, I right. know. So this is for Christmas? Yeah, this is the Christmas Day menu. Rats, they celebrate Christmas, or are you Jewish coming from Brooklyn? I celebrate everything. I yeah. like all the holidays, but this feels very pagan. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. Well, I mean, God, a lot of these rituals were from pagan paganism, but like this dish, it was for the like 
like a springtime sort of Easter, you know, um, resurrection of Christ and the blood was used to thicken it, which I'm really interested in because it's a very cool culinary technique called a uh, liaison de sang, which means like a blood thickener in a stew. So I'm pretty stoked on this. Can brown the meat first. You know what? Yeah, start tossing it in the pot. Toss cool. it in the hot lard. I'll salt it and pepper it and then we're gonna remove it. Then we're gonna start sweating down all these alley. You seem to know French pretty good. I actually took five years. This meat stinks. Uh, you ever eaten kangaroo before? Nope. No, me neither, me neither. No. It is really popular in Australia though. There's actually a big like government mandate because kangaroos are such an invasive species in Australia. And so there was like this marketing competition to see who could have the best idea of what to call them to put them in stores. So now you can actually find kangaroo in Australian grocery stores and at a lot of high-end Australian restaurants. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna get a taste of like old country France as well as modern day Australia. Interesting. I wonder what like, I've seen the videos of the kangaroo trying to take a golden retriever into the woods. <laughs> well, and the owner like fought the kangaroo and got his dog back. But I'm like, what do kangaroos eat? Oh, I, I, kangaroos, I, I think just eat uh, uh, like leaves. I, I'm pretty sure they're well, not. Well, it was gonna do something carnivores. with that dog. We don't so. know what it was gonna do with that dog. Maybe him and that dog were, you know. I'm gonna take this meat, it's nice and brown. I'm gonna remove it. And then once I get all this meat out, just start dumping in all the vegetables. It smells uh -oh. like beef. It does, it smells beefier than beef, which is crazy. And the funny thing about this dish is that like you see the care that the restaurant kind of took in actually crafting these dishes because uh, rabbits and kangaroos, I believe are both- In a similar- What are they called? Species or whatever? What are they called? Not pachyderms, that's an elephant. Well, I always thought that rabbits were rodents. I think rabbits and kangaroos are related. Someone fact check me. Rabbits and kangaroos well, related. Kangaroos are, is it the marsupials? marsupials? The marsupials. So I don't know. I don't know. They're big rabbits that like to box people. Also, they're buff and sexy. <laughs> Ra beep, beep, beep. Lord, what did you make this as? What is this? What family is this in? Uh, I'm gonna start dumping in the onions. We got our green onions in there. We're gonna take our Cipollini onions. Ooh, those look good. Some carrots. And then do you wanna start chopping up the rosemary and I'm gonna strip the thyme. Should I do it with this knife though? Yeah, it's all getting cooked in the same all thing. Right. Also, you're a rat in the kitchen. You're worried That's about right. health codes? Listen, I don't care about my health. I care about yours. Do they have health inspectors coming into the restaurant? Cause that's a big yeah. deal about that in the movie. Oh yeah, we had them. What'd you do to them? Well, we didn't do anything to them. I just would like stack myself on top of other rats, wear a little trench coat, like hide out in the back. That's smart. Hope nobody asks any questions. Like a, like a silly 90s kids movie. You weren't there. The kids took it from us. I'm adding the meat back to the pot. It's gonna get that nice and brown. The stew is coming together. This smells so yeah, much dump better that than in. trash. Dump that in the pot. <laughs> so you weren't allowed to like eat at the restaurant that you worked at? No, they wouldn't let us eat. They also like, when they got like their best wines yeah. for the dinner, for the Christmas thing, they got like all the best wines uh -huh. and stuff. And then they wouldn't let any of the rats like- That's a shame. Yeah, I got a present They'll for cook you, us honey. in the wine. I got but you they, a Christmas heaven present. Heaven forbid they let Fifel get blitzed. I <laughs> Fifel, I want you to get blitzed off this wine after I dump some nice. of this too. Well, cause that was a really cool thing, right? Is that in Paris, you know, it was all the fresh meat that they really struggled to get and all the fresh produce and all that. Yeah. But, like people still had their gardens. They still had a giant stockpile of the best wines in the world. And so they were just hammered through this entire siege, which is how I want to go in a siege. I'm just gonna be rocking the high yeah. noons and white claws all the way through. Ooh. What's yeah. a white claw? That's oh. kind of like, I've got those. <laughs> it's like a wine, but for uh, frat bros. Oh, you know what I think is the frat bro of the animal kingdom? Kangaroos. Really? Problematic bros. They're, <laughs> they're not like bros with a heart of gold. They're the problematic bros. Well, I mean, have you seen them? Yeah, they, they're They're jacked. always coming at you like, ugh. <laughs> It's a real like gym tan laundry like, kind okay, of animals. buddy, like. All right, so the wine's reduced. We're gonna add some stock and now we're just gonna cover this, let it go. And then uh, we actually have a really cool condiment to go on this stew. Ooh. And then meanwhile, Fievel, <laughs> have had it, kiddo. I've been west, but I'd like to go south. <laughs> ah, my back, my neck. <laughs> Lenny, the stew is boiling. How does it smell to you, Liz? Oh. Use your rat palate to inform what we need to add to it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It ain't trash. You are hanging out in a man's sweaty pants all day, though. Has that affected your sort of olfactory senses? No, actually, I think it's better for my pH. <laughs> oh, God, that's great. Live amongst the musk. I love that for all of us. Thanks. War really is hell. So is living in a man's pubes. Hey. So, uh, <laughs> as long as it's warm.
So uh, start hacking up those herbs. If you want to pick off the bigger part of the stem. So again, we are making just a simple like herbed mayonnaise. It's kind of like they would add a, uh, what's called a rui to like a bouillabaisse or certain stews that's very common in French cookery. So if you want to like, pick off some of those herbs, you can just kind of take it and just rip it apart. I'm oh, not too cool. particular about the stems. Pop it in the blender, we're gonna blend that up. What I'm making is called the uh, liaison de sang, which is a uh, blood thickening agent that we're gonna add to this along with some burnt breadcrumbs and a little bit of this giant jug of wine that yeah. we're gonna get through before the end of the siege. God dang it, Lenny. It's just you and me, Lenny, just like it's always been. And the lion, which uh, apparently they just couldn't figure out how to kill. They would have eaten the lions and tigers if they could have figured out how to kill it with 1870s technology, but they could not. So I think it's hilarious that they were just spared. They ate a lot of horses they before did. we got to this point. And they bled a lot of horses to make their, their blood into puddings. But cars weren't around for like another 15 years. So you're just killing your car. They had nowhere to go. That was literally the thing. The, the Prussian strategy, they literally called it a war of masonry because the Prussian strategy was just, yeah, this is the section where I talk about Prussian battle strategy. Yeah. So they literally had Paris surrounded and the Prussian strategy was just to wait because the French military generals, they knew that if Prussia attacked, they would just burn themselves out, waste their artillery attacking a city that like could not really be invaded and there was no reason for Prussia to do so. So they literally just waited there. That's why this siege was five months and that's why by the third month, people got bored and they were like, well, let's continue making these classic French dishes for the aristocracy out of camels and kangaroos and rat, I mean, and cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you're, you're fine. Keep you're that, doing great. Keep that under rats, rats. Raps, rats. All right, so uh, I'm gonna take, this is a typical way to finish this dish. I'm gonna take a little bit of this red wine and I'm gonna add it to the blood to thin it out because once you add blood to heat, it starts coagulating. Then we're also gonna add some breadcrumbs to that. And we're gonna stir that together, then add it to the stew, take it off the heat and the blood should thicken it nicely. Uh, do you see? <laughs> I was gonna ask, do you know how they kill the horses? Yeah. Sledgehammer. I do, I think that, that was a bad move. Brutal, golly! Aren't like horses kind of helpful in battle? You'd think. Yeah. Uh, but again, what are they gonna do? Ride out of the city? There were some French generals that tried to capture outer cities because they were like, we can inspire the French to rally. And then they went out there and they tried and they failed. And people were like, nah, we're good. We got our wine, we're chill, we'll wait it out. Yeah, but the French were like all gung-ho for this war in the first place. Yeah, it was Napoleon III's last stand pretty much. Yeah, the people wanted to do it. It. The people wanted it. They were mis misinformed. Yeah, so, uh, you know. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna add this blood and wine to the stew. Oh gosh, there's the breadcrumbs. And then I'm gonna take it off the heat and I'm gonna kind of temper it in there. This just, just looks like grass. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that got it. You're just bringing grass into the kitchen. What I you know, doing? I just wanna make sure I did a good job. It matters to me if you <laughs> like what I do. Toss it in there, toss it in All there. All right, cool. All right, I'm gonna dump in the mayonnaise. Add some of that in there. This is fresh homemade style mayonnaise that I got from a jar. Sue me. Heck Mayo's yeah. hard. I can see how this blood's thickening it. This is actually working really, really well. Ooh, it we don't have really clumps good. going. We're gonna wait for those breadcrumbs to thicken up. Let that boil off for All just right. a second. Is this, do I do I'm any gonna chop up some shallot real quick. Oh, okay. Shallot's pretty common. This is a sauce that actually like dates back a long, long time. Uh, it comes from like an Occitan tradition where they would just like blend egg yolks and oil and herbs into a bunch of stuff. Is this the chef who made all this stuff? Is this his famous sauce? This is a famous sauce. I mean, back then, they, the French canon of cookery was so like codified by that point, and a lot of it was actually under Louis the Fourteenth. I mean, you had you know the early people in the late nineteenth century, like Auguste Escoffier. But already by then, I mean, there was such a tradition among the French aristocracy of these insane stews. Like this stew would literally take three days to make, typically, because you had to marinate the wild hair in cognac. You just had to like let it soak in there. And I bet you didn't. They didn't let the hair have any of the cognac. You're more worried about the justice for animals in this, and I love that. I just that. really think we deserve to be drunk. <laughs> you can add a little bit of vinegar to this just to thin it out. And we're just gonna blend it up. I imagine you didn't have Vitamixes in your kitchen. No, no, I just mainly, it's kind of the same thing as the wine. We just get in there and be like, tap, 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 <laughs> Like on this thing and we're like, just, we're chopping it up. With that so you would've just stomped on these herbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that for us. It's gonna turn a nice, beautiful green color. I love that. I'm gonna get a couple more herbs in there. We got tarragon, we got chives, we got, what else we got in here? We got some fresh parsley. This is just a, this is a, a, a weed whacker. How, what did you do? Is this how you prep for the chef? Well, most of the time, I just don't like to be noticed by other animals or other people because they might go, hey, big rats. <laughs> Let's get it. Get really fly by so I run out and I just go, ah, okay, here we go. I bring run, it drop it and throw it away yeah, and hide back in the pants. Your hat! My I, hat! I thought there was gonna be a tiny man under your hat. Sometimes there's a tiny beret, but not for today. And just blend it up. There we go. That's the color that we want. All right, let's see. Let's, let's get your tasting notes on this, Lenny. Okay. I'm curious to see how this... That is adorable and disgusting, equal parts. Oh, I love it. You love it? I love it. I got your approval. It's tangy. It's like got some tangy to it. And now it's gonna kind of marinate you from the inside out so you'll be seasoned when the time comes. <laughs> I'm really committing to this. <laughs> <laughs> 
We got the sauce very done. We got the sibe de kangaroo. This is nice and thick. Once the temperature drops, it's gonna get super luscious. We're seeing it get there right now. Uh, it's smelling really fantastic. It smells absolutely amazing. I'm excited to know what's gonna combine together. I, how it's all gonna be put together. Uh, you ready to feast? You ready to enjoy Christmas dinner during this troubling time? Sure. Let's do it, yeah. Lenny. I wanna get in on the accent fun too. Lenny, I imagine this is your first time at the dining room table. How does it feel? It feels very good. <laughs> so we have our chameau roti à l'anglaise right here. That's that roast mm. camel, that beautiful jus. We got the bloody kangaroo stew, but we also got some other things. Because again, this was a tasting menu during Christmas, during the siege, and all these restaurants that were catering to the aristocracy, they still have their gardens out there. So you got your watercress salad, your buttered peas, you got your radishes with the butter, mm. some tinned sardines, they still had access to all the preserved food. And then of course, your classic French cheese Ooh, board. Ooh, I love cheese. Uh, okay. Grab some cheese, you, what do you want to dig into? first. What's calling your name right here? Which I, animal do you hate more? I'm gonna have to go with the roux. Let's go with the roux. Let's try it. The roux stew. All right, here, grab grab some of the sauce oh, there. I'm just gonna dollop where it. I put the grass in it. <laughs> yeah. It's our grass sauce. You find a nice big Ooh. chunk of meat. It congealed really nicely with the blood. I mean, this is a fantastic looking stew right here. All right, cheers. cheers. Did you wash the, the little hairs off your paws? No. Well, that's okay. That's I okay. I also that's just okay. finished ball duty. Oh, the poop ball, not the- I not just the... said, I didn't even mean to make a pun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's eat the kangaroo. Holy crap, that is freaking packed with flavor. Whoa! It's a really lean meat, so it's like a little bit tough, but that said, the actual stew itself, it's got the beautiful richness and thickness in that blood, and then the green sauce just cuts through it all like a knife through butter, hot diggity! Wow, that sauce is really, really good. That's insane! Yeah. They were eating well. I mean, like, not really, because again, this was a kangaroo from the zoo, but given the circumstances, I mean, they were able to make really tasty food. Yeah. Want some camel? Yes. I got you. Oh, I got man. you, Lenny. You're my boy, Lenny. You're very generous to me. <laughs> you think we're gonna be friends after this? I hope so. I, hope I so mean, too. many people who say they're my friend end up just ignoring me after a while because I smell. Yeah, I feel that too. But me and Lenny have something in common. I can't wait to tell my friends and my family about your kindness. All right, dunk it, dunk it in the jus. Um, I've never eaten camel before, so this is exciting. I have not either. Dig okay. in. Wow. Mmm. That's good though. Really good. It's, it's got like a more irony taste on beef to it. I imagine those camels have like more movement than cows, so there's a lot more blood sort of flowing through the musculature. It's tougher, but it's not like super tough. It's like meat chewing gum. It takes a while to get through the camel, but- It's definitely a cud. <laughs> <laughs> the sauce is so good. Man, you're real good at sauces, Josh. I mean, so are the French, and that's why all this food is so freaking delectable. And again, this was only reserved for the aristocracy and the occasional rats that pulled their pubes to make the dishes happen. Yep, yep. Well, I mean, we would go through the garbage afterwards. There wasn't much left over, but we got a couple little, you know. Well, I have another really nice treat for you. I actually have a large wheel of cheese over there for you. Just ignore like the wooden structure and the metal bars hastily placed over the top. It's My just a delicious very piece own of cheese. wheel of cheese. Your own wheel of cheese. You are so generous to me. No, Lenny, come on. We have a special bond here. It is true. I feel very bonded to you, and I will never forget you. I will never forget you, Lenny. My family will remember your name. <laughs> Thank you. Go get that cheese. Okay. Go scurry away. Scurry I have a away. That, I, will bring the, I, will bring I know the you. You love your me. bread. Lenny loves here his I go. bread. Here I go. Uh, <laughs> okay. Here scurry go. away. Yeah, uh, Ooh, so I we've yeah we've we've run out of zoo animals and uh, now it's time to go for, for the rats. Hey, for the this rats. is the thing I gotta get under here. What is this? Hey! Yeah. Hey! It had to happen. I'm, I'm sorry, Lenny. I'm sorry, Lenny. The food's running low. Oh. We got soldiers outside the restaurant. We gotta eat. The cheese is good though. You know, that was a nice little variety of stuff because there are quite a few videos where I'm doing the same voice. No, don't uh, <laughs> don't break the fourth wall like that. They're different characters that are They're well They're different researched. characters, it's just some of them all sound like the rat. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Danny DeVito rat. And Emily, I love making videos with you. This I is do my favorite too. series that I do. This is so fun. And I'm, I hope that we get to make more. I don't know. I haven't played a lot of other animals. If this video gets 12 million views, we promise to make more Meals of History. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say hope. Let's just say we're gonna do it. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed ah! Hot Dogs Betty no! Hot Dogs Snake! No! Hot oh, God, <laughs> listen to our podcast on Hot Dogs Oh God, the snake's oh, back. God. Mom, subscribe to the TikTok. We gotta go. This Bye. is a very realistic one. I don't like it. A new mythical kitchen creature approaches. The pizza cock is here. That's a combination of pizza and peacock, and it's available on a brand new apron at mythical.com.